All right, Stuart, technical problems are fixed. Yay. That's always technical nice. Technical problems solved. Technical solutions, more like. Butimus. Butimus Maximus? Ah, yes. Or? Yes. Hi, guys. We're back talking about Prodigy. Episode 14. Crossroads. Part 1, apparently. Apparently, part <laughs> Crossroads Part 2 is next week. So. Wait, so you're saying that wasn't... The, the, the ending wasn't the intentional pacing end point of a satisfying... That's, that's the end... That's the end of the series, man. That was the series finale. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, because Discovery Season 1, 14 episodes. So, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> and Andrew says the title of this episode should have been just fucking tell them. And I agree. 100%. <laughs> the two people most competent to do it, um, Zero and Brock, uh, never actually got a chance to speak to a Starfleet officer. I mean, Brock almost did, but... Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, Stuart. Welcome back. Hi, Samuel. Thank you, and welcome back yourself. Yes. Prodigy. Uh, I wish more people cared, because it's really nice yeah. to see, like, real Star Trek stories with Janeway. I mean, at the very least, people should come for Janeway, because there's now real Janeway, which wasn't always going to be a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Tellarites, we've got Klingons, we've got Zindi, we've got Andorians, we've got Trill. My god, I can keep listening. We've got Diviners People, we've got two Janeways, we've got Mur two Murphs. Well, Murph and a half. And we've got, I guess, Human. Human esque. Akuda. Is it Akuda or Okonda? What should I call it? I always get it wrong. It's Okana. Okana. I get it wrong every time. Okay. Okana! <laughs> yeah. Um, Akuda Makonda. What a glorious <laughs> phrase. I just call him Hakuna Matata. Exactly. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to do, Stuart. Although, uh, not to jump straight to something else, but uh, Aaron Waltke, you know, writer of Star Trek Prodigy, he let slip Never on Twitter. <laughs> Lies. Um, he had a really good point on Twitter. Someone asked casually, and I'd considered it, and I don't know if you'd seen this, but someone had asked, uh, who led and who followed that Lower Decks included Akonda, as did Prodigy, uh, who decided the eye patch, basically? And Aaron said yeah. ours was in production way before Lower Deck, so we designed him, and then they changed their model based on us. So. Oh really? Wow. I know. Even though that came out feeling like a year earlier. Two? No, two years. No, was that season one or two? That was two. Yeah. So like a year and a bit earlier, but. Yeah. Oof. Cool. So yeah, Prodigy had the idea. They had the backstory then. Lodex kept that canon, as it were. Yeah, and Joshua, one, one, three, four, five, puts in two dollars. So thank you. First super chat of the of the evening. I mean, uh, the episodes are short. Wish they were longer. Hundred percent agree with you. This show definitely could stand to have like the hour long format. Sa sadly, Discovery could lose twenty minutes. This could gain twenty minutes. Oh yes, easily. Because they'd be forced to tell easily. more compact stories. Well, I'm just throwing this. I'm going to start a poll though, before I shake, so I'm going to ask a poll. All right, you start that poll. Uh, let's see. Um, so, guys, hit that like button if you haven't already. Um, he's going to start a poll, then he's going to share this video around, then I get to tell you all about how important it is for you guys to super chat and to help us out and to show your support for the channel. We really appreciate that, of course. And, uh, yeah, but I'll do that after he starts sharing because... He usually doesn't listen to me ramble on like that. Uh, hello, Donnie. Hello, Tara. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the poll is up. So USS Dauntless. Dauntless. What do you think of it? Mm -hmm. And the options are like it. It's okay. Prefer the Voyager Dauntless. I'm not a fan. Mmm. Mmm. That'll be interesting because yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird design. I think. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this how this plays out. So. I think I know what's going to win, but eh, it's all good. All right, so, I'll share. See you in a minute. Go. Share. Uh, that gives me a chance to tell you guys to hit like. Make sure that you uh, super chat. It really helps us out and uh, shows your support for the channel. Also, consider hitting that join button and joining the channel. Um, many ways to support us, even heading on over to Patreon slash Trekyards. It's like another monthly service that uh, helps us out immensely. Uh, so any way that you can donate would be greatly appreciated. We really um, need the support and uh, appreciate all the support that we do get from you guys. So 
any thoughts, any ideas, anything you want us to talk about, any theories, super chat them, and we will we do read every super chat on the live. So um, it's a good way to get your question for sure answered and your voice out there, your opinion out there. Um, so, and it helps us out. We really appreciate that. It kind of makes it a lot easier for us to do this. So, uh, yeah, help us in any way you can. Also, check the links down below. There are links to the Teespring and the Tea Public store. And uh, some really cool Trek Yards merch, I got to say. So, if you can uh, support us in that way, we appreciate that as well. All the ways we really support. We really appreciate your support. That's what I meant to say. Also, share the videos around and just tell people about Trek Yards if they don't know, if they like prodigy and want to hear other other trekkies opinions on it it's a good place to come and uh, just hang out and chat in the in the chat because we got a really great community and uh, we really like hanging out with you guys and talking star trek because it's kind of what we do here so <clears throat> daniel yeah a little bit um I'm back. Yeah. Oh, good. He's back. He's so true. Breathe easy now. Yes. The big question, as you know, what do you think of season one, episode fourteen, slash season one, batch two, episode four of batch two? It's batch three, isn't it? They take us. Technically, take us two, yes. Two breaks. God damn. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, Crossroads, just season one, episode fourteen. Let's make it easy on ourselves. Um. It was fun. It was a very good um, f uh, episode. Very well paced, I thought. Very well um, presented. Went by way too quickly, and the ending was very abrupt. And this this I call uh, frustration the episode because it just talk just spit it out. We we know where the protostar is, but it's got a weapon on it that'll destroy anything Starfleet. Whew. Let's go from there. <laughs> simple simple i know they're kids i get it um might be a little bit intimidated or afraid to say something but uh, rock i think expressed it the best it was like you didn't tell them about the weapon that's the sole reason we left the ship um <laughs> so yeah uh, i'm glad that they've found each other though like i i, I assume it's going to be hopefully cut and dry from here although at the at the end of it kind of puts a little bit of a wrinkle in the plan so Maybe they'll have the Bromulans and Janeway hunting them at this point. So it should be interesting. But uh, yeah, looking forward to part two. I think part two will really bolster part one um, and uh, kind of give it more context and, and make, let me know more concretely how I feel about it. Um, I did enjoy it. We got to hear all of the uh, all of Janeway's crew essentially doing their thing, which is great. And I want to see more of that. It's just uh, it's one of those things. Just the frustration of this episode just kind of got to me a little bit. Which is funny because but... you start off saying it was great, and as you went on, you got more frustrated because you remembered what happened. <laughs> yes, that does exactly. often happen but with it was you. Still great. But this in particular, it's like yeah. you thought about it. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. But it was still great in the context of New Trek. This was a great episode. Oh yeah, God! Uh, if you we're... compare it to Discovery, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some returning favorites. We got a Klingon. We got a Zindi. We got another Kazon. I think uh, it's so the same guy some... as well. I think it is too. I'm pretty sure. Cause and it, it raised it raised a lot of questions last night on my live. Because like, how is a Kazon this close to Federation uh... space and the Romulan? Because it's 70,000 light years. And I'm like, I don't know. Could have been a wormhole that got sucked into by accident. There's only like one Kazon trader out here. Who knows? But anyway, it's that's such a frustrating question as if all Kazon stay in their lane. It, yeah. You know, it's like on our Earth, people make it everywhere. There's going to be one of every nationality in every country. You know, just happenstance because people migrate. If one Marge said, we're going left, kept going left. He took his family left, kept going left. While he was on neutral, yeah. you know, he's back basically at our borders. He had a family, his family grew up they went left kept going left wow we're there it's not that hard or, or 
or one of the, the many space anomalies we see in Star Trek that fling ships wherever. Yeah, something could have happened. We don't know. This could have could have happened a hundred years ago, and they've been stuck in this area of space, yeah. and they just kind of made their own little clan and doing their own thing. Who knows? It's, it's that right. easy. It really is. Like yeah. if it was an entire like Kazon mothership of sh- like if that turned up like okay, but I like that it was like a couple of guys or a couple yeah. of families, very small, very minimal. That's all good. Or even just one. We've only seen this one guy. Or even I just think one. Maybe the same guy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure the 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 Trabe said that was a couple of hundred years ago. So if it's seventy years at cruising speed, if it's three hundred years ago, yeah. there's plenty of time to get over here. Yeah, plenty of time. Especially if you if you can imagine that once some I remember some some Kazon, despite being slaves, uh, some probably say, you know what, we're not going to attack our slave master. We're just going to leave, and go as far away as we can. Boom, done. And they just went for 300 years, found the Alpha Quadrant, made home, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway. Sorry, that's annoys me from season one. Anyway, because I love Kazon. Like, the, yeah. the idea of them, not so the execution, yeah. but they're a good idea. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what were your thoughts on this episode? I've kind of given mine. I liked it, I enjoyed it, but it was a little frustrating. So, yeah. how about you? And these are always my second thoughts, because we both had just watched it, as we normally do. This is second thoughts. I, I the thing that stands out again to me the second time as the first time is how cheap, wonderfully cheap the interiors were for the station. It felt was no yeah. thorn put into just sort of things, places. They were so meaningless and character characterless that it really highlights the characters that you see foreground. So there's a, there's a real like like production value less element in that bit. But this each scene has a meaningful character moment, which is kind of rare. To, like keep keep building. There's very little um, padding, very little padding. I like the episode quite a bit. I think the ending is apart from the literal ending. <laughs> I like the ending. I like the start. I I really quite like the fact that this show is very much a twists and turns kind of show. None of us could have predicted that they would defeat the Diviner by the end of the first part of the season. Nope, that would have been entirely radical or go to Starfleet this early, or, or whatever. So to actually deal with, and now we've met Janeway, no ifs, no buts, no fake holograms, no time travel, no through a portal, just nope, bumped into her. Entirely real moment to let Dahl actually have his real first moment. No no buffer, no whatever, just just that is it. It was really interesting, and I said to you in the review, it's a, it's a flies too close to the sun episode, because everybody is right up against the line of, of, of realistic, of... Just tell them, move on, have it sorted. That's them as a writer's really pushing the credibility of these scenes, but it creates just an interesting sort of tension. Like, wow, we're having full on trill and and, and think a real scene. Like, this is an actual scene that actually means something. Wow, wow, we're only episode four of this chunk. That's really cool. So, that stuff was really, really interesting. That said, obviously, it is frustrating when they don't, the entire point is to meet Starfleet. They actively run when they could not actively run you know it's like you've got explanations you've got ship logs you won't get arrested if you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we we didn't take the ship you know i mean we used it to escape enslavement thank yeah. you very much and i mean let's be honest yes technically <laughs> the the the, the um uh, denoblin guy said they butchered the ship they, he was very exuberant on how they destroyed the station but jamie already doesn't like him She's not yeah. gonna. I don't think she's gonna trust him to the nth degree that others would. You can tell she's pretty much backhanded. Like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, if they put forward arguments and evidence, which there is some, so that's difficult. And the ending's certainly difficult as well. So there's a few of those things. But twenty two minutes and kids show. These are things that this show is starting to hit up against as concepts, and that is an yeah. issue. Kind of like Discovery being the reverse for like season one and two. We have more than time we need. Oh, being so on Star Trek, we can do radically on Star Trek things. It's like, ah, you push up against the not Star Trek message. This is, yeah, it's tricky. It really is. It really, really is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But did you enjoy it overall? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I did. Second time, okay. lots. Um, and unlike Picard, who we've now learned, now this is season one and season two Picard. Season three is Terry's show, not the other two. They don't have good resolutions for their storylines. I'm entirely confident yeah. there'll be a good part two. Entirely confident. We said that at Lower Decks, the last one, with part one and part two, which part two for me wasn't amazing, but that's because it had a... 
this I think will, will do well. And I certainly hope Romulans will be a progressive threat. I love Romulans. You know mm. the Romulans are coming in my next film, which is really kind of cute to be like, ah, neutral zone, ah, neutral zone. I just did this. <laughs> mm -hmm. More shots of Romulans as well. But I really hope we're going to get some Romulans because they built a model, they built some characters. Like, like yes, that's really, really intriguing to me because not that underused, mm. but Prodigy team, for the most part, great writers and can write, I think, smart, interesting, intelligent people. So Romulans, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Carwin says the protostar crew think themselves as escaped convicts in a stolen ship. So I can understand the apprehension about approaching Starfleet, especially as they are kids, but they don't know that she would take their word over his. The the holographic Janeway even made a point of saying, if you're running into trouble, try to seek out the other Janeway. I'm sure she'll find you as promising as I do. So, I mean, I don't know. Just the fact that it's actually Janeway they run into should be like a huge icebreaker for them. Um, but uh, it's kind of, yeah, I the whole it's their kids thing just keeps being bring, bring, brought back up, and uh, I get it, but it's still frustrating, honestly. I also don't know if they think of themselves as genuine. Um, what was the word he used? Uh, convicts. Conv I mean, they were slaves, not convicts, first of all, so that's not right, and they can prove they were slaves. And they rescue the ship, and they also save. Like, the, I don't think they they've made gone. a point of seeking out Starfleet at all costs. They've, they've, they've made that decision. That's why they left the ship, so that they wouldn't. So they could find because Starfleet and not damage anything. It'd be Starfleet. It'd be very, very, very different episode if they had said at the start, "We need to resupply deuterium, so we've gone to this planet to barter for trade," and then Janeway shows up because it's the nearest station. But when they are seeking Starfleet. I understand on their own terms with they fly to a place and they say hello with St hello Starfleet but the fact is they bumped into Janeway who they have the most personal connection with ever that is the yeah. one person they've been in with potentially that was the time to do it and she seemed nice enough yep. to him I get their time was interrupted but that was the time speaking of time being interrupted it's time for an ad <laughs> That's so convenient. And we're back from that ad. There you go. Um, S, uh, <laughs> Aeon says, uh, was this the episode, was this episode the season finale? No, there's still six more episodes to go. So Just plenty fantastic. more. And then Picard. Yeah. Because we've had... For better or worse, we'll see. Because have we had discovery between Picard and Picard? No. We haven't seen Discovery for a while. Okay. So was it Discovery, then... No, but it was Discovery... It was Discovery, then Picard. Discovery, Picard, then Stranger, Stranger Worlds. Right, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, because we watched Picard and Stranger Worlds, and Stranger Worlds was much better. <laughs> we were surprised. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had Lower Decks... Pro okay, right. So we had every yeah. single show between Discovery and Discovery, including two Picards. That's yeah. weird. Uh, SVS Guru 2000 throws in 10 euros. Thank you so much. This episode was a bit frustrating. Just surrender to Janeway. The excuse they're just dumb kids can only carry us carry you so far. I can buy it from Dow, but Gwen especially should have clued, clued them in. Well, Gwen's was the only one that actually made legit sense because when um, the the ensign said that I know your father, he's on our ship, that threw Gwen for a loop because it's like battered, you know, child syndrome. It's like, oh my god, my father who's caused so much pain to us yeah. is. So that's the only one that makes the most sense, honestly, out of the other, the three interactions that we got with Starfleet. So uh, yeah, yes and no. It would work better if they'd actually really delved into that feeling of ah, but they kind of dropped it for two episodes. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Wow. Mm. Let's get under review. Yes. Just out of talking points. So. Mm -hmm. Dauntless. Hello, Dauntless. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's talking about how hopeless he is. He can't remember anything. But he rem all of a sudden it's a flash and remember Gwen Gwendala's name. And that's how Janeway says, I see you're up and running. It's like, no, I'm cobbling along here. But thank you. I know but, what she meant, but it was just kind of funny. But not in a coma. So it's one, one, one step forward. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, uh, Janeway just assures him that we got an eyewitness to the destruction of the... Uh, station, so we're going to find your daughter. Don't worry. 
And right now he looks like a very, very much a victim because, you know, uh, his daughter was kidnapped and, you know, Janeway's got all these, this evidence building up about the protostar and it's just currently operating it so and i will commend them for at least well setting up this he feels underdone vibe he's been brought down all these pegs and it kind of works you know jamie's learned to kind of help people when possible so this makes sense i will also say they they are setting up the uh, i didn't notice the first time or the second time the uh the wind was well, it's, it's a view screen but the uh the view screen in sick bay which seems odd but now looking at these it's clearly like a separate like rest area off the bay yeah in a little cubby yeah. hole but it is a bit daft and you can turn it on a window because you, there's a side view and it's flat like there's yeah. no hull yeah. so it's a view screen which is great it should be a view screen um yeah. but boy is it important later <laughs> and pumpkin spice this was brought up last night one of the theories is that uh, dal is actually the evolved version of the the threshold lizards that they left on the planet in the delta quadrants Ooh. <laughs> So it's actually Janeway's like offspring. Um. That's actually very smart. It's uh, it's dumb, but it's but smart. Ooh, interesting. I, I don't want it to be the truth, but hey, it might make Threshold way better by you know in a lot of people's minds. Well, there's also another theory which you know because because and we've both also wanted this. Where the hell is Chicote? And yeah, also from the episode one, is he just the diviner who's been converted? Happens all the time in Star Trek. Mm. You know, where's Jacob in the entire time? Under our noses, played by a different actor. Boo. Don't yes. like that one either. No. <laughs> but I do like the Trill, who's very caring, considerate. She comes with it. She's really is, um, MVPing this Dauntless crew. The other two are fine. They're okay. She's really, like, um, yeah. doing well. And also, Aaron did confirm she's a non joined Trill, which I certainly assumed because she doesn't give off that vibe. She's. Yeah. And you don't really see those, but. Most trill would be unjoined trills by an absolute hundred to one margin. So I like seeing just a trill, just a lady yep. who's a trill. That's great. It's it's good. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, so they get a, a captain's log of that they uh, don't want to use the ship as a weapon or have it inadvertently destroy anything Starfleet. So they're hiding the ship, mm -hmm. and well, the plan is to stash it, and uh, basically go look for a ride. To get to somebody in Starfleet, get to a Starfleet outpost or a Starfleet base, and tell Starfleet what's going whoop, on. Whoop six, so. whoop six, whoop six, whoops, no, whoop four. Oh, oh. Pog can't go on anything under warp five because he's, you know, royalty, don't you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like whenever I see you, I'm like Jaguar car or nothing. You know, you gotta hire one to drive me around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but they take take Murph along in a little cat carrier thing, <laughs> <laughs> and we get a nice tricorder display of what's going on inside the the cocoon. Yep. So mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. some good stuff here for sure. And it's a very odd scene because Prodigy does do curveballs well, so this could genuinely be goodbye Protostar for a few episodes. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and I the it was. Yeah, they entirely present that as a possibility. The 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 totally earnestness Jane where he says in a second, Joe. Well, good luck, guys. I'll see you when it's done. Like it's really quite wholesome the way it, it, it does, and, and you feel a genuine not loss, but a. We'll see you in a, yeah. by episode seventeen. I don't feel yeah. cheated. They undid that. I just feel more cheated by the end being so wrapped up. But that's well, they so so quick. But that's yeah. But I like it's a nice it's, yeah. a, it's a nice little scene and yeah it's, it's a yeah it's a good little goodbye because they've got to risk everything and we've said before just go talk to them about the ship we've said that and they are yeah so yeah. they are doing plan B. So good fun. And they say goodbye to Janeway, and uh, Rock's worried that Janeway's going to be lonely, and she's like, hey, if it's three seconds or three years, it doesn't matter to me. Yes. It does feel like a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you ever get into a pinch, look up the real Janeway. I'm sure she'll find you as promising as I do. And that was such a, a stab in the heart second time around. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. If only you knew fake Janeway. Yeah. yeah. But I also appreciated second time the genuine nuance in the variations of Janeway, not the same acting. Yeah. Distinctly different. Um, so I really appreciate that. Good job, Kate. Aeon throws in five dollars. Thanks so, so much. much, Aeon. I didn't get why they didn't make a shuttlecraft for themselves because it's Starfleet tech. It could be replicated with the replicator, the, the virus into the ship. We don't know if that's the case, but... So we've said that every episode. <laughs> 
But Aaron yeah. did say that he he believed that yes, all tech would be touched by it. Corrupted. Yeah. Corrupted. Yeah. I don't. I think a bit of a cop out because the replicator isn't going to replicate a mini version of the thing. Personally, I think so it's a all has to do is it, yeah, all has to do is replicate some lines of code in the computers that run the whatever vehicle they make that could transmit it. So. I wish they would say it. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Uh, Brandon Carell throws in $10. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Friday. Not sure if I missed you address this before I joined today, but how long until you think the Diviner gets his memory back? Well, he's getting it back in good chunks. When He recognizes the Protostar later, mm -hmm. and I think him coming to the bridge to stop, my daughter's on there, don't destroy it, is more of a, don't destroy the Protostar, I needed to complete my plan. I think he's kind of already... Mm. We're uh, remembering more than he's letting on, mm. but yeah, it's going to be pretty quick by the looks of things. He's he's really kind of chugging along, so yeah, I think I could see next week, honestly. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, and I really thought they were going to leave the protostar there, and I'm like, it's visible from orbit, or somebody's going to stumble into it, but no, they cause an avalanche to cover it, which is great. It's a starship, it's not going to like it can handle that, so. That's fine. That was a great idea. So. Hell of a visual. Yeah. It's like, oh. Okay. Wow. I mean, of course, I mean, the ship can take space. Of course, it can take an avalanche. But it's it's really as a we're burying it moment. It has a vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, boy. Pumpkin Space. Oh, no, jump. <laughs> Pumpkin Space says, I might have missed it, but the Protostar was buried for 17 years. At least seventeen. We're not sure how long. Yes. Is Chakotay in the past? Well, he wasn't. He, he was in the past. Could, in the past. Yeah. It's now the present. But we so. could, when we find him, he could be an old Chakotay. Who knows? Yep. He could be in the pan buffer still. He could be in somewhere else. Now, how much do you, did you love the Star Trek six? Um, again, shots of the walking through the bloody snow because these were almost verbatim. I yeah. loved them personally. Yeah, I did too. I thought more Kelvin though for some reason. I don't know why. Kelvin or Discovery. We've had Discovery we're wandering through the snow. We've had, you know, Kirk wandering through the snow in the Kelvin timeline. But these but, yeah, but the, these, the coats, these are the drone the shots in the shot. Yeah. I, I, and I, this shot. might be embarrassing. I literally had the score <laughs> from the scene in my head. I I overrode what I was watching because it was so specifically clearly they would do these visuals. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, so we get to Denaxi Depot, which is the only major, major trading hub in this sector, a haven for smugglers and anyone wishing to disappear. So are you saying, in other words, it's a hive of scum and villainy? Yep. That's that, that's the Star Trek way to say, to say that. You couldn't get more obvious, could you? <laughs> yeah. So... And even this isn't a depot, it's a junkyard. It's. I, mean, I like it. It's, a, it's good. But it's like, my God, guys, you just nicked the Star Wars reference. Yeah. I love it. I'm pretty sure this is a sem similar, a similar Star Wars to what we see in often TNG, the the map painting of the Circle Station. I think they reference that in this. Can't remember exactly, but I think so. And yes, we get the same freighter that we just saw in bloody Lower Decks. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been used in 45 years, whatever, 35 years, and it comes back twice in four weeks. Bloody hell. The hell the chance of that, Stuart? It's great. I mean, pretty looks, good apparently. Looks very similar. I mean, I recognised it. Uh, and yeah. you know, it's the fastest ship in the quadrant, Stuart. Didn't you know? Didn't you know? Warp four. Yep. Oh, he thinks he has a fast ship. <laughs> is that implying that yeah. civilian ships there's like a whole separate speed ratio, and four is fast for civilian ships? Because he does seem quite proud of that. I would imagine so. But that, you know, considering Warp 5 was a big deal in the Axe era, I don't know, it just seems a little bit low to me, but for for an old rust bucket of a ship, maybe it's really good. Who knows? But he's also on the edge of of, of the space, so I mean, there, there could be a logic of wherever you are, it's more impressive. But 4 is real slow. Yeah. Like, like I think I think Mayweather's cargo ship was like 2.5 200 years ago. I want to say warp 3.2 for that one, like at maximum, but I could be wrong. Oh, I don't it know. It was a freighter, so who knows? No, was his the... Uh, which was which was his of the two named ones? Uh, J-Class, I think. 
Nope, search more than just J-Class, you get a sailing boat. No, it wasn't J-Class, it was the other one. What the hell was the name of that? What is it? Family's Freighter. Oh, that's um, my Freighter. Uh, ESC Horizon. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Horizon. What an awful name. No wonder I couldn't remember it. <laughs> oh, okay, it was actually J-Class. Um, <laughs> I think Horizon. Uh, and yes, Captain Casey Stewart, you are correct. Different warp scales than in the Annex era. 100%, yes. But That is fair. So that, yeah. So I think warp 4 here would be about warp 6.5 or something silly um, back in the Annex era. That is time, true. So. That is very true. Yeah. yeah. Hey, good good save there. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I do like that idea that, yeah, they're obviously getting the super amazing tech because they need it. Most people can't afford, can't buy the injectors, can't get the stuff. So it's kind of fun to say, yeah, 4. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. But we meet Captain O'Connor. Yes. Is, is he outrageous, he Strip? Uh, not, not in this one, no. No. Um, but he looks good. And I looked up Bill Campbell, what William Campbell looks like now. Uh, that's exactly how he looks, minus the eye patch. So, good job, guys. He didn't sound like him, though. He definitely sounded like an aged uh, Billy Campbell. Because um, it didn't sound like it was Rocketeer days. But that was quite a while ago, mm. so. And I always say they don't sound like they're supposed to sound anyway. So I don't make fun of me for it, so. But he definitely had the older, gruffer kind of voice. I don't know if he was putting on a voice for the recording or if it was just his natural voice, but. I will say that episode was so many years ago and he's only one of hundreds of guest stars. I could not have told you what he sounded like particularly well anyway. And I, I don't know if he's in... Billy Campbell and anything else. So for me, he's only that guy from 30 years ago. So I would not recommend... Have you recognize... seen The Rocketeer? No. So I... I... Oh, you gotta, you gotta watch The Rocketeer. So I, I, for me, he's just guy sound like guy. You know, I would not have been yeah. able to, to tell you the same voice out there. Like, you can kind of hear it like in an absolute tiny way. That could just be a, a voice artist. Uh, I mean, good to get him, but he obviously can't yeah. be as cheeky and as sly and young sounding 30 years later. And fun fact, he was in the running to be the Riker. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think we'll see a lot more in part two. That I, th I think this is definitely, because he's not in it enough to be, to feel meaningful to me. But as a setup, he's now in, like, how do you get on the Protostar? You have to have enough scenes to justify that. Okay, that was this. Right? So yeah. that, that I thought worked well for that. And Tara says... Puts in five dollars and says, "Wait, help! Seventeen years. The hollow scene of Janeway sending Chakotay off the photo <laughs> star is supposed to be seventeen years before. Yeah. Doesn't look older. No, 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 uh -huh. no, 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 no. <laughs> they were searching for the ship for at least seventeen years. The Diviner, which means there was some time travel shenanigans um, as to the proto star, you know, traveling through time at some points. We don't know where to, when to. We don't know the the all the details necessarily. So, yes, that hasn't been unraveled really." Yeah, there's only been two scenes with him, and one of which he said, you know, Mayday, Mayday, we're going to some kind of anomaly. Yeah, and... And then they've been there 17 years. <laughs> and the Diviner's Planet was con first contacted by the, well, the Federation. Yeah. We're not sure if it's the Protostar. Yeah. But yeah, that was 50 years ago. So he showed it 50 years ago in the holodeck, and then he showed it today. So at least 50 years, if the Protostar went back 50 years... That's very very likely the insinuation in this point. So, yeah. yeah. So basically, the diviner is also it diviner is from the future, and the protostar is from the present. They were sent back into the past, but now is the present again. Now it is absurd coincidence that the protostar launched within a few months, and now they're having to find it again. That's kind of the impetus. I was of the belief, based on the com badges and the uniforms, that this Jamie was from the future as well because the future com badge. But that's been made pretty clear that she's just from now. It annoys me a little bit. I yep. would like to, I would like a future voyage of Janeway to come and help, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, SVS Guru 2000 throws in five euros. O'Connor looks like he should have been voiced by David Hayter. Mm hmm. And Ozzy throws in two dollars. Vice Admiral Janeway goes on away mission. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. And boy, does uh, she lead. Yeah. Kicking butt, you know. Thirst Contact, who's been a member for 31 months at the rank of Admiral. 31. Wow. 
Okay, remember that warp four in Enterprise was the old warp scale, yes. with the exception of Disco warp scale <laughs> until at least Star Trek three uh, to four. TNG warp scale factor four isn't that slow. Yeah, I, we already talked about that. It's probably like, like I said, warp six and a half. Yeah, in TNG scale. Probably honestly more. Maybe. Yeah, because they compress that down. Even later, even later, the protostars like going warp nine point seven. Mm-hmm. Not nine point seven five, like nope. Voyager could. Yep, which I like because it also yeah. doesn't yeah. follow that you'd highlight the warp engines if you're doing the proto drive. So yes, I like exactly. that it's not the fastest because it's not the point of the ship is to warp. I mean, it's as if you're crawling and then suddenly you're walking. Why would you focus on crawling power when the point is to use your running yeah. power? Uh, so. But I, I, I liked him okay because I think he's very much in part two. <laughs> it's my vibe. Oh, but yeah. but yeah. you know, gentle, fine, not not a bad guy. Smuggling things. They look like they bombs want some to deuterium. me. Wants some deuterium and Zero's like he's desperate. He drives a hard bargain, but he's desperate. I don't usually deal with mind readers, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line to mind readers. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get a surprise. Well, sorry, it would have been a really surprise reveal, but they showed it the day before. Oh, the Zindi, yeah. What a weird thing to reveal, because this has been such a cool moment, and it's still a cool moment, but it's like, oh, yeah, the Zindi we just saw yeah. yesterday. Stuart, a lot of people have brought up... Oh, uh, fine, I don't like the Zindi, honestly, so... Boo! Good to see them back, anyway. Boo. But a lot of people brought up the point, which I thought in my head when I watched this the first time, reptilian Zindi on an ice planet, it's got to be rough, because reptiles are cold-blooded. They need to, like, heat up on a rock before they can, like, move around and stuff. But uh, maybe those maybe those suits have, like, uh, like the cool suits you get for mascots that have a little tubes running everywhere that keep you cool, cold. Maybe those tubes there keep them warm. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, the Zindi are back. Now that's a super... So, and, the, and their security, which is great. Yeah, I, I, I certainly... Would... You know, you, you see the villain of a previous show and you think, they'll be the villain here. No, they're literally the police. Literally the security. And they don't do anything overly wrong because the guy is smuggling and the job is to catch him. They do. It's all good. Are you with him? No, no, no. We're, we're not. Bye. Yeah, I, I really like the vibe. As I said in our other episode, it's great to see them. It diversifies. We know that Zindi aren't Starfleet until Enterprise J era in that timeline, but they're still around. This is, I assume, nowhere near the, the expanse. So that's great. They went around. They found jobs. They did things. Their security. I think their suits are great. Like And like, like you said, they're definitely heated suits, which the piping then kind of adds more sense of their heat pipes. Boom. Even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I said 10 out of 10, honestly, for the, the work. Um, but why is he smuggling, like, bombs? Because they have, like, fuses as well. Mm. Or are those... Wait, are those the Ferengi mind control devices? With a uh, let me let me take a look with a with a with a, a wire sticking out because they're pretty uh, reminiscent. They look similar. The the designs, the the gray type design on the bottom, like the circuitry yeah. looks the same, but the top doesn't. So who knows what they are? Honestly, uh, I don't know. Well, they don't say so. <laughs> and first contacts like, oh, you read the right uh, regular comment while I was typing my member chat. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Just came in really late, and I was like, what's yeah. going on? But it's a very fair point. Um, now, I was kind of surprised we didn't see any other ships here we knew. Because there's the freight... I know, I was expecting an Easter egg or two. Yeah. We don't say the Klingon guy needs a bird of prey or anything, but his ship is not at all Klingon looking. You know, it would have been nice if it was a Klingon looking ship. It's fine, just. You know, just not very. Uh, I got an announcement I... over the loudspeaker yeah. mm -hmm. that uh, all the ships are grounded due to a blizzard. Mm -hmm. And I love the whole meteorology thing with the rock. Like, are you a meteorologist now? Maybe, because she's still trying to find her like speciality in science, right? So that is cute, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they get another vibe that feels like the bar from Star Trek Five, where the the lighting is, and and the guy is really telling a story to the same case on it. It looks like his bloody amazing hair, and he's not impressed one iota. Yeah. And pumpkin spice, he didn't say there that the uh, expanse is still there. Is saying from where the expanse was. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, he's telling the tale of how he escaped. They were savages. They destroyed the entire station, and the Kazon just looks so unimpressed. Uh, we found out he was picked up by an Orion crew, 
Mm-hmm. Not that that means much, but nope. no, there it is. It's not the most you satisfying can't hear his payoff. Badge. Yeah. Although, has he got a. Wait, hold on. He's. Is he... What's his. He's got a second jacket? Because he didn't know. He shouldn't have a winter jacket. But he does. He has a winter jacket later. Where did he get a winter jacket? Yeah. I guess the escape pod had winter jackets ready to go. It would probably have. It would, yeah, it would have survival gear like that, I would assume, yeah. Mm, I suppose. Something for all. All con- contingencies yeah. or whatever you land on. But then if so. it's but if it's one that fits twelve people, you're not gonna have twelve times yeah. like twelve jackets when food's more important. Oh, we'll see the jacket with him yeah, in a minute, yeah. with him in it. So, uh, uh, but you know the Orions kind of you know, and I like the fact that this is obviously right near the relay that the Orions picked him up and then dropped him off the nearest place. I would like some logic of, of why they didn't just, you know, um, make it a bar or give them something. It would have been nice to have mentioned. Or oh, what to give was my, my my other pip. They could have made a joke about that. Uh, but yeah. also, hey, these this Starfleet, you know, right on the edge of Federation space, there's no visible hostility to Starfleet. It's a fine balance here. They might be annoyed by him personally, but he's annoying personally. But there's no mm-hmm. anti-Starfleet vibes here, which I like, because it's the frontier. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah. yeah even when uh, the Ensign steps in and helps uh, Gwendola with the Klingon, the Klingon's kind of like, oh. It's not Starfleet kind of specifically. That, yeah. Damn Starfleet help, you know, helping people. <laughs> That's a very small note. They could easily have made this a very hostile place. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Good job. And even Janeway, like, this is Admiral Janeway of Starfleet. You yeah. Know, lock this place down. And yeah. con- contacting head of security, whatever. Uh, so. But, I'm going to end the poll, though, because I want to start a new one. I asked you all. So. The USS Dauntless. What do you think of it? The winner is I like it. At 48%. Uh, it's okay. 25%. For the Voyager, 20%. So actually, no, people prefer this one overall. And only not found only 7%. So that is a surprising set of numbers. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. He's going to do another poll, but I want to tell you guys to hit that like button. We have 64 people watching, which is fantastic. And we have 49 likes, which is all right. Can we get to 60 likes? I think we can. So hit that like button if you haven't, if you're just joining us. Keep the super chats coming. We're about a quarter of our way to our minimum. So, you know, more would be good. <laughs> We'd appreciate it. Uh, so help out any way you can and definitely contribute to the conversation because this is a good episode to kind of talk about because there's quite a few things to discuss i think <clears throat> uh, for what it's worth the kelvin timeline enterprise escape pod in the 2009 movie had a thick winter weather type jacket in it so kirk would have the appropriate clothing on in, the surface in fairness he also became captain from ensign in two three weeks so let's not pretend anything that film's worth a damn to the scripting he was on and... an ice planet so the script gave him a jacket Let's not he pretend was in, anything about that. Not just any ice planet. He was on Delta Vega. Oh, yes. Which is inside of Vulcan, apparently. The ice it's planet. Because in TOS, it's like, yeah. It makes no sense. Yes, the, the ice planet sense. in orbit of a desert planet, which means they're in the same yes. place in the solar system. And you can see it. So they're that close. But not affected by gravity or black hole. Right? Don't quote that film for logic. <laughs> it... He pulled it out. Oh, I remember, he also crashed next to Spock. Yes, yes. Within within half a meter, pretty much. And it could be said that the Enterprise knew they were launching him to that planet, so they supplied him with a jacket beforehand. That would be the most obvious thing. But also, Spock would say, F you, you're dying here, Kirk, you shit. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that, I mean, that first film, Spock, was a real piece of work. Yeah. Yeah, terrible script. My God, that's plot hole filled. And don't, worry, don't worry. those two writers are never going to work on Star Trek again, Stuart. They would never be given more Star Trek. We need to do a review of that movie. I know. We need to review some movies. I think that'd be hilarious. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, that 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 is a you and me hammered yards. Like a four-hour live talking about a movie. Because we do two hours for like yep. an hour long or half hour long show. So a movie's going to be at least four or five hours but that's, for a review. But that's me and you in your living room with bottles of alcohol. Yes. Just bottles and bottles. We'll do that. And like a huge like rotor of, of super chat. I was like hundred bucks for this sort of drink's really strong. And just we have food and yeah, like fifty bucks for a for a burger and just like just killing ourselves for your amusement. And to watch oh nine. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Back to the poll. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Do your poll. Um, <clears throat> and hit like, guys. We need a seven likes to get to sixty. That should be very easy to do. Seven of you have not hit it, so do it. Drunk yards into darkness. <laughs> yeah. Drunk yards into darkness for so well. I like it. Um, but we get the arrival of Janeway and crew, and it's like Barnish Freck is not answering his comm badge, and she says, some Starfleet officer. So she's already not impressed with the guy. And when we talked to Aaron, we said, why is there only one guy on the station uh, instead of, like, more? Like, how did he get this assignment? Maybe he's not a very good Starfleet officer. And Starbase 80 had him for like a week and didn't want him, so they reassigned him to this this one out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe who knows? Starbase 80 is the is the place you get sent if you're a bad officer. It's funny the first the first time you meet him, you're quite encouraged by he seems nice. Yes. But yes, clearly, uh, yeah, he he he's not so good, which is fun. But yes, the Dauntless Crew beam down in a lovely looking new beam effect. It's great. It's good. Well, and it's cool jackets. I like the jackets. Yeah. With the hoods and the glove and the fingerless gloves. I think they're very cool looking. They're a little bit showy to me. Like we want to make some cool jackets. They're gonna look cool. I get yeah. it. But they yeah. You know. Also, if you note Sell them. Did I buy one? Well exactly. Um if you note and I didn't notice until you you can literally see the particles that make up the beaming and the little stars. Because the thing has to be rendered. That's why. That's why I got that. Wow, that's really interesting. Cool. And uh, another thing I pointed out on the other one is that this beaming effect is a legit beaming effect, mm -hmm. whereas the the proto stars is the JJ swirl effect. With sometimes so the, an... with sometimes the TOS audio and sometimes the Voyager audio. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. It's great. I just wish they fucking had the right tricorders. Yeah, sake. I know. Because because give do give Prosar anything you want, but give real Starfleet the right stuff. That said, I still love they are using the alternate com badges. I never thought they'd be in canon as a primary com badge. Still really happy with these. Yep. Uh, Joshua one one three four five throws in five dollars. So thank you. Thanks so much. I would watch seeing you guys talking about old Star Trek movies. Awesome. Yeah, we, we definitely need to do that at some point. It'd be better if we were together, I think. Just kind of hanging out on the couch. <laughs> well, especially as you could do several... If I'm there for a week, you do three movies. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. A lot, it's a lot of drinking, obviously, but, you know, we do it for you guys. Well, when you come over, we need, I'm going to make you watch Spaceballs and The Rock. Mm-hmm. Because they're both really good, and I think you'll be good. <laughs> SVS Guru 2000 throws in 10 euros. So thank you so Boom, much. Thank you. It would make sense for an escape pod to have survival gear of all sorts of, of biomes, since you never know in advance where you're going to eject or land or crash or be carried to. Yeah, exactly. Yes. They would have survival. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes too much is too much, you know? You know. You know. But it's, I also might have a replicator to make what you need. That was the more logical one for me, but, uh, yeah. Yep. But, yeah, they beam into this, anyway. this long shot, which, like I said, I mean, Pretty much no character, would you agree, Stuart? It's generic outpost number nine. Like, no yep. no offense, but it leaves zero impression of any kind, you know? And it's kind of weird to have, like, the sun shades on the ice planet because it's inside, too. It just seems like a like a outpost in the desert, honestly. <laughs> but you know why it's there, though? So you can't see everybody. So you can't see past them, so they don't have to render from the yep. zone time ceiling, less to render. It makes you feel claustrophobic. I mean, it's a really smart choice. It just looks like shit. Creatively. <laughs> but speaking of, they do not skip a single beat. And Dorian goes straight past Rock Talk. Oh, wow. Our heroes she are meeting our villains. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I was frustrated by that because I'm like, seriously? I hope somebody else runs into somebody. And yeah, they keep getting that. So, because um, right away, Jankum runs into um, <laughs> Doctor Noon, Noom, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so happy to meet another Tellarite." And Doctor Noom is just so dismissive because they're Tellarites. They're just 
disagreeable as, as a default, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like you're you're under something undersized. Pog is a name we reserve for um, uh, the runts of the litter, undersized uh, with a small vocabulary. No. And he's like, yeah, but Star Starfleet. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not small. <laughs> Like that was frustrating. It's just like continue what you were saying. Don't worry about that and move on. But well, I like it. I think it's kind of cute uh, because yeah, and the guy bumps into him. Sorry, little guy. Did you lose your mommy? <laughs> and then he screams. <laughs> There's loads of context here to remember, guys. That we are you seeing them together where he's smaller than them, but not undersized looking. Yeah. We also kind of forget he's a teen relative because he just is. He's chief engineer. So he's Mr. Engineer, Mr. Experience. But you throw him against an actual adult who actually knows what the kids look like. This guy's thinking, yeah, he's like 15. Like, how many of you that walk by a 15-year-old who is also very small? Okay, not to be this mean, like, literally, but yeah, you'd be like, yeah, he's a, 50, he's a young 15-year-old. You're not going to necessarily take him seriously. But then you've got the layers of, yeah, so, socialness. I mean, I, I think for the most part, both were just being averagely aggressive rather than just mean. just being yeah. Yeah, it's just they didn't, <laughs> continue the conversation to get past that part and obviously uh Jankum doesn't has has ever had that or at least for many years but i love seeing the height difference i love that they look so radically different as a species yeah and i like seeing them together it's it's it, yeah it's interesting I, I wish we had more of this scene honestly i think this character needs more lines in general yeah um yeah just the height difference my god all these kids are like Below nipple height, you know they're tiny. They really they entirely change uh, the paradigm of how big the protostar bridge should feel. I, I cannot wait to see the a old... real sized person on the bridge and see how it actually feels. The only one that's similar is Gwendala. She's almost the same height as the ensign, just a little shorter. Yeah, um, and she's taller than the other kids. Yeah, so it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Grand McGregor though, ten dollars, oh. working and can't listen in. Oh no. Oh. But I found this to be the worst episode of the series. What? Oh, six point five out of ten. Director missed the flawed, flawed lines, camera position of rock, etc. But I wish everyone on production the best. Huh? Mm. Uh, Grant, Grant, yeah? Grant, stop, stop working. Stop. Take a break. <laughs> take lunch break. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean by rock? I really want to know what you mean about the camera position of rock. Let us know. See, that I kind of understand what he's saying because she's asking for a ride from people and, oh, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, and then the officer walks by. would have been great if they changed angles and somebody walked between the two of them so she missed the bright red <laughs> uh, of, of his command jacket. Um, that would have... Because the angle was... It looked... Yeah, I understand kind of think what he's talking about there, so... Yeah. Just didn't make sense that she overlooked him, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you get exterior, you get a set of the of the the, the, the movement ship, the, the the speeder. There you go. And I really do wish the ship looked even one IO to Klingon. I don't think it is a Klingon ship, I think it's just a freighter, like a civilian. Because yeah. he's just a guy. I'm pretty sure every other ship in this fleet, of they're all just the alternate concepts for the Kazon ship. So you'll have similar wing designs. I'm pretty sure, because <laughs> yeah, they made a whole load of variants concept-wise, concept, concept wise, and they're all kind of different. So I think it's just... Because it's not Klingon at all, this design. Yeah. At least to me, anyway. But it was great to see an actual Klingon wearing Klingon garb, and he's, like, all insulted that she's speaking to him in his own tongue. And she's just looking for a ride. What do you got to trade? He looks at her, you know, little fretwork thing. It's not for trade. And then the Starfleet ensign steps in. And kind of puts him in his place. Now, so. it, it is also what when we watched the episode with the Klingons and the hollow Klingons, we had noted that the pinker skin hue was probably because of the red of the interior lights. This is now ignoring that. Don't think it should be bright pink, like a, well, a dark pink. It's definitely pink, right? Mm. Too mm. pinky. Still love the arm though, still love the general look. And I think it's probably, if we look back, it's probably one of the character models from the episode. I, I'm pretty sure it's just guard number three, you know? Uh, but I definitely thought this was going to lead somewhere. I'm absolutely fine it didn't, 
But the way it's framed with the arm piece, it, it feels like a setup for a story. I'm fine, it didn't. But like a Klingon is like, ooh, yay, awesome. Um, but yeah, then since stepping in, it's great. Yeah. And she's and Gwendel says, thank you, officer. More like Ensign. And uh, my name is Gwen, and she takes her hood off. And, she, of course, the Ensign recognizes the species as the same as the Diviner. And then Gwendala, do I know you? Well, I know your dad. He's on our ship. And that freaks Gwen out. And she's like, I got to get out of here. Um, Hi, General. But the Ensign even stops her and says, I know you're in trouble. you got to tell me where the Protostar is. Which really freaks Gwen out even more. And she takes off and hides on a, on a it was passing by a thing. So... Yeah. yeah, and I really like the way because we don't hear Gwendala almost ever. It comes across as such a burn word, such a punch word. <gasps> Gwendala. She's like, oh no! Only my yeah. abusive father <laughs> called me. Like it, it, it. I, I get it. I just wish every episode we'd seen her having more turmoil with this with her dad. We haven't really. But I like the Ensign a lot. She's very. She feels very deductive here. Very smart. Uh, also she's been caring for the dad, so she's like seen the species up close more uh yeah mm-hmm. it's a cool uh and boy you like get to janeway because not only have you found the protostar in essence you found like big piece of the puzzle here right here i bumped into what are yep. the chances yep and then it gets even more what are the chances Stuart? it goes from being that was enough of the t- <laughs> oh no we're going full on our two main leads are gonna meet oops yeah well because janeway Taps a combat and says Janeway to away team, and he turns around. And uh, Captain Janeway, I prefer Vice Admiral. And I love that she takes the time to talk to him. Like this is genuine Janeway, even though she's on a mission, she's kind of pissed off about the situation. She's still there to, you know. So you want to join Starfleet because he's his little tail thing is doing a thing, <laughs> so he calms it down. And uh, he's like, "Have you ever wanted to say something or ask something and you thought you screwed up?" And I love her answer to that, like, yes, frequently. However, you know, um, not saying something is, you know, the worst thing. So I usually just go for it. And uh, it's a good conversation, but he's like, but, 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 there's no buts in Starfleet. We make it so. <laughs> uh, it's a really wholesome little conversation here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it works really well, actually. And it's um, how you play this scene, my my goodness, how you write this scene. Because she's an admiral, she's stressed, she's off to Kote, she could feel above all these people, she's been on a desk for years. Here she is in the Delta, well, the edge of the Delta Quadrant, but you know, the right at the edge, pretty far away. Absolutely polite. Not friendly, but why would she be? But the lovely level of, of professionally curt stranger. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But instantly takes an interest and uh, yeah, really good balance. And the acting, it's just a crispness. It's a different part of the vocal range she's using. It's really interesting the performance difference. I expected one thing though when she says when she says just take a, ch-. I you know I normally just take a chance. And he's like, I knew you'd say that. Mm. I, I expect kind of an eyebrow raise from her. Like how how would you know that I'd say have that we met? Because I'm Admiral in Starfleet. Or, yeah, 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 exactly. Have you seen me on a Hollow? Um, Did you watch yeah. my interview with Admiral Picard last week about the Tellarite plan? Do you no. have do you have Starfleet Love Slave number nine? I'm in that. I did. Oh, I, Stuart. Oh. No, no, no. Even better. Did you play uh, Admirals Against Humanity? It's the knockoff oh. board game that the Ferengi made. Nice. You, you can buy it with the the Martok game. Sa- same, same, yeah, same that, part of the program. Get the Janeway pack. Yeah. And then you got future Janeway, past Janeway. Every Janeway hairstyle is a different Janeway pack. But, General Grievous throws the in fake, two dollars. The fake mirror Janeway. That's the real Janeway. That's the exclusive. That was a, a the Best Buy exclusive. General Grievous throws in two dollars. I can see the Ensign and Gwen becoming friends. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, especially if we're going to see more of this yeah. group. That is absolutely a pairing. Yeah. But we get interrupted because the first officer has found Mr. Barnus Rex. He says, Admiral, and of course, of course, um, uh, Dahl recognizes him and ducks out because it's like, oh shit. And he's real small. I had no idea he was like short. Kid enough. height. Yeah, and in <laughs> fairness, he looks small, but when compared to Janeway, but he's still like gotta be four foot something. Yeah, like that is a very small 
Oh, right. And I got to be fair, that jacket doesn't look Starfleet. If it wasn't that blue, I would say that the Orions just gave him a jacket. Yes, it should have it doesn't been... look like... Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be a random color, because it's his uniform color to a T. You're right, it's yeah. just that random jacket he was given by some guy, but it's blue, so, yeah. Yeah, just through his combat jacket. So. Yeah. But this, I think, is a really cool little scene, actually. I, I, I'm I surprised how negative he was towards them. He doesn't want to look like an idiot. He wants to make it look like he did... survived the savage attack. But, but that's not a Starfleet thing to do, though. He didn't do anything wrong. I know, but... But he's a bad officer. He's, oh, he's I know. And and even what it even goes to what Janeway says in a minute. And you didn't tell me they were kids. The first thing you, you say. Best, you got bested by kids. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. He's, he's a tricky one to read. He really is. But it's uh, and then the fact that Dar just says, maybe they didn't mean bad. <laughs> that was really funny. Maybe they had good intentions. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> that's really funny. And he makes them look so bad. Like, there were six of them. There was a slimy one. There was this, 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 and an unknown one. And a really crafty one with a weird thing. And they were dressed as Starfleet. <laughs> Just to make them even worse sounding, you know what I mean? Like, And massive credit to the animators. The look on CG Janeway's face, which is like, what? Is really well acted. And that's, a hand an that's an animation. Brilliantly acted, yeah. I thought. Really good thought. Yeah, yeah, the chase is on, Stuart. Oh, no. Yep. Uh, we ran into Dal and um, um, Zero, who, or not Dal, um, Rock and Zero, who are just kind of chilling out. And I was like, hey, I found Starfleet. Oh, that's good. Not so much. No, no. They might have thought we destroyed that station. And, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So it kind of snowballs from here, the whole, like, misunderstanding again. But, oh, man, it's just... Talk, just say, look, there's a bomb, or there's a weapon that'll destroy Starfleet. What? That'll get their attention. Then you talk. It's easy. Oh my god, it's frustrating. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they got, and Dal even says, "Yeah, I, I found Janeway." Everybody should have been like, "Oh, really? That's awesome." <laughs> yep. No, hundred percent. Yeah. It's a. Uh... Oh, it's a, it's just. Oh, it's it's a suspend suspend disbelief sort of moment. Cause, I mean, and Gwen makes it worse because she says my father's escaped and is on their ship. See, that could uh -huh. have been the line that turned it for them. Yes. Working with your father? Put, I won't go to prison late. again. Yeah. It was put in too late, though. You can easily miss else, it. it just... Yeah. Because then they literally run. And it's like, yeah. but you were there to find them. Back in one second, strip. Yeah. And it goes on with more misunderstanding of like, uh, you know, I thought your father, I thought my father was out of the picture. Well, he was. He was on a strand on Tars Lamora. But now he's got Starfleet chasing us. Um, and then Dal says, hey, they think we destroyed that station. Oh, and by the way, she's after. Uh, the captain of the protostar who just happens to be good friends with her so and then rock makes the obvious observation of wait a minute wait a minute so all of you talked to starfleet but no one told them about the deadly weapon that's the sole reason we left our ship because that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> general grievous goes on to put in two dollars so thank you so much uh freck frex is going to end up scrubbing plasma conduits. Yeah. And it's Frex R F R E X. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like I just said, a rock points out what we were all thinking. <laughs> you all talked to Starfleet and no one mentioned anything. Yeah, this yeah. is a nice save and they definitely know we really need to address this. It yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like how Jamie does call on security to be, you know, security. But boy, yeah, like how that. how gently arrogant. Hello, you you aren't in my jurisdiction, but please arrest some people. It's like, okay, okay. Bold, I like it. What's well, Starfleet? They're on the Federation side of the border. We'll find, kind of find but they're not out, in Federation so. space, though. Because they don't just annex everything. Yeah. 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 But it works. It works just fine. 
And they just nick some random scooter thing. Yep. Which is not at all Star Wars. Barely... I know, right? Yes. They're not going to go Even in Hoth spins. right now. Oh. Even spins. Spinning. Spinning. I know, I know. <laughs> spinning. That's a good trick. That's all I could think, Stuart. <laughs> they barely make it out before the doors close. And they think they got away, and then no, there's speeder bikes after them. And I will. Which a lot of people. I oh, go ahead. Right. There you go. On the first reaction last night, a lot of people were like, "These guys are these kids are now responsible for the death of some a few Zindi security officers." And I'm like, to be fair, the one that crashed, it went off behind a snowbank and then crashed. It could have been that the pilot got ejected out the side, and landed in a snowbank. He says, "Never saw it." Do you think Zindi? Reptilians are the uh, eject kind of guys. Well, the ship would do it automatically if it senses it's going to collide into something. That's my theory. I mean, if they've got hover, they should have <laughs> ejection seats. Yeah. That was definitely on the second time. I was like, you'd just murder those people. Because that's, that's, yep. that's still murder. I mean, let's be honest. That And these are entirely without fault people. They're even missing on purpose to not hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, when you said that the first time, it's really bad. The level of missing is absolutely embarrassing. It's, it's terrible straight, animation. It's a, it's a straight beam weapon. All you have to do is point the vehicle at the vehicle you want to hit. And there's a point where they're crossed. The beams are crossed in front of them, which means they would have been on the weirdest angles behind them. But yeah. It's, it's, there's also a shot. Maybe they were deliberately not trying to kill them. I don't know. There's a shot where one beam's that way, one beam's right for this, this way. Yeah. What do you mean in the air? What are you doing? Well, it hit, it hit a snowbank and went up. Yeah. Oh, fine. Yeah, but that's. Yes. But I will say it's, it's a reasonably fun chase. I thank them that this sequence, I was really kind of worried, would be a long sequence from the trailer. Is very short in relative. It doesn't feel long, so it is a nice change of pace while not actually being a, a big part of it. So I thank them for that. And I will say another thing: these uh, uh, police things, for whatever reason, I just kept thinking are they like based off the Alice design from Voyager? That bright blue paint. Yeah, the paint. Yeah. Because it's not like it's similar design, but Alice is quite a boxy little thing. This is, these are quite boxy little things. I know Paris yeah. made it blue. But it's, a, it's the same damn blue. And it's a weird blue. You know, it's got happy Alice vibes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We get the whole Murph's about to hatch. Tell him to wait. This is not a good time. It's the whole cliche and everything. Like, I'm going into labor. Yeah. I'm having this baby. Can yep, you yep, hold yep. it? No. <laughs> Although that's never really addressed because it's very quickly kind of wrapped up. Oh, and uh, uh, Darth Eddy. It's sort of heartwarming to see Zindi Reptilians following human softly off his orders. We said like that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, General Grievous, two dollars. Zindi are cross-eyed, like in Spaceballs. <laughs> yeah. Damn Is that yeah. across her nose? Not up it. Sorry, sir. Yeah. And then we find Oku uh, Okona, Captain Okana. Oh, Is <laughs> on board. He's like, yeah, this is awkward. And pretty much just long chase shooting. But yeah, the, the missing is very egregious, unfortunately. And the shooting causes an avalanche, but they get across the chasm and they see the avalanche and they stop to look at it. It's like it's going to be a bigger problem, but no, they just drive away. Yes. Good summary. I mean, but what do you get? Chlorine trifluoride propulsion. Is that from Voyager? Because that's I recognize this sort of green tube thing. From well, chlorine a... is what you put in a pool. Oh well, yeah. Trifluoride, I think, is what you put in toothpaste. Right. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> so so who knew if you combine them, you get magic? Is what you're saying? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I should put that in my Camaro. See if that makes it go fast. I mean, tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's just snow. So. Now, what do you think of having him in the boot? Of this random speeder. It was strange because last time we saw him, he was being taken away by security. I, I just imply that he escaped and hid there. So, which is kind of fine, I guess. It's very kid show. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't find a reason personally, except look, there he is. There's also a tiny little box he's in. It's not as if... And he would also feel a thing start to move, zoom away, and hear the... <laughs> Why is he going to yeah. stay in there? Because he's a smart man who's a survivor. Why is he letting himself be in a box that could get destroyed by anybody? It doesn't. It's a. It's Maybe he a, got locked in there by mistake. He hid in there and it got locked from the outside, so I had to wait for Zero to open it, which is what happened. Oh, I mean, yes. I don't mind the idea they put him in there, him in there temporarily before they went to the, like the police district, but that's also dumb because it's not a police car, and all the other yeah. reasons. It's, it's this I thought was a dumb. Little, like, well, we have to get him back in the plot somehow. Look, he's here. Okay. General Grievous, two dollars. Uh, Zindi, oh, I read that one. Never mind. I thought it was a new super chat, but no new oh. super chats. But I did like the this guy gets us or gets me or gets it. The the, the engineering, it's like it's worth risking our lives for certain engineering things. I that was. Great. I loved when they stopped though and they jumped out and he's like, um, I had the impression we were racing towards the starship. Don't worry, we're on top of it, literally. <laughs> See, I thought man. that was really stupid because they were literally going to him to get passage on a ship because they didn't have a ship. So that he would not think they were going on a ship. That's true. But I think there, there, there might have been dialogue in there somewhere of let's get to the protostar or something. But I don't think there is. I think there might have maybe been a line originally in the script that was not put in or cut out or whatever. Because you know what I mean. That makes sense. If they were talking about getting to the ship. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. Because of all the people, he would know they have no ship. And Grant McGregor throws in $10. Oh, thank Amazing, you. thank you so much. You got us over the halfway mark for our minimum, but we're, we're getting there. Keep the super chats coming. Uh, and he says, Hollow Janeway should have said, remember, explaining the construction of the construct could violate the Temple Prime Directive. So you need to find the right people without before telling the truth of what the weapon is. Remember, explaining the construct would violate the temple prompt directive. Yes. So you need to find the right people. So they did find the right people. They found Janeway herself. Which Hollow Janeway was saying, if you get into a pinch, find the real Janeway. She'll find you as promising as I do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Eric Martin throws in $10. Mm, boom. The Zindi security guys had the marksmanship of a stormtrooper. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. I would, been, I would entirely prefer it if they had just used their hand weapons. Then they can miss any given yes. day. Because that's, that's just them trying to be good shots versus practical shots. But physical beam weapons on their thing is like, oh, no. Feels daft. Yep. But the thing opens, they go into a new room we haven't seen before, an airlock. Yeah. Wait, where is this? Where... Because this has to be the top of the ship, because otherwise yeah. there would be a hill of ice. But the top is the dome. Is the so this has to be right behind the bridge dome? Because there's no the bridge is then goes like this. Or the snow fell evenly across the secondary hull, so there's a little bit of a slope in the snow. But it doesn't look like that at all. It does so not. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But uh, don't don't overthink it. It's a, it's a hatch. It's fine. It's a Millennium Falcon style back of bridge. <laughs> what? We'll look at the ship later. We'll try to figure it out. Oh, anyway. God. I love Janeway, though. Yes. Oh, Janeway. How, yeah, how long was I want? I want to hear all about your adventures. Yeah, we're before they started. Didn't go great. The worst. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> beautiful i was almost waiting for it to say doll you've changed so much in these in these long years i'm guessing <laughs> he looks these, these these years of experience of have weathered you well doll it's been 45 minutes oh i kind of want that line as well it's been like two hours is that it yeah. but yeah i, I think the cool line same makes that scene grows hello <laughs> i'm a friend now although she would have staffy records of him not, maybe yes, not yeah. she'd have to access them, but they would have records of her, so, of him. So that will certainly save some explanations next week. Yeah. Uh, then we get the Zindi looking for where they went, Janeway and crew overlooking, and then the protostar rises up. 
and face to face with Janeway mm -hmm. and then takes off and she's like, Dauntless, beam us up now. I love that scene. Mm -hmm. um, very well done. It's it's such a middle <laughs> finger to Janeway. Ha 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 It's not meaning to be, obviously, but it really is, and it plays you really well. And you can imagine the the heart pumping because finding them does not mean the ship. And Ourself. yeah, it's, is it just me or does is the Dauntless crew have one of the uh, buggies like we saw the Protostar build? Similar. It's very similar. Yeah, its design. Yeah, and they just leave it there, which is fine. But yeah, it's it's weird because they didn't build it. Obviously, they didn't take it down either. Yeah. I feel like it might have been a deleted scene because there's if you look at the there's a, like a drone shot we go up there's like a one person <laughs> speeder like a motorcycle it's like what why yeah. is there a motorcycle version what but it doesn't matter we've we've skipped past that in terms of like that yep, moving on but yeah she yeah. gives an order she's very slow in giving the order which I kind of like very commanding she's not rushed she's in control and we yeah. jump straight into action because you know the kids might think they've they've escaped because they've physically escaped but there's spaceships involved so no. <laughs> yeah, Dauntless is in orbit right above them. And yes, guys, that's not the real scale. That's camera trickery, and we made a slight flub to make this look so silly. We yeah. had a. It's like a Jaws shot. Ignore it. It's not the scale. None of these shots yeah. are, because it's entirely broken as a shot. Even the, the medium is, is not the right scale remotely. So somebody they were in a hurry somebody hit magnify on the view screen which is all the windows apparently and uh just magnify everything <laughs> you're not wrong but now they're officially being chased I, I love janeway too the whole janeway she's like what did you guys do while i was sleeping and okana's like yeah you guys are in more trouble than i am <laughs> And the chase chase ensues at warp. I see them both go to warp, and we we dwell on these shots. These aren't rushed shots, which I like. Well, they don't really, you don't get any um, warp grills activating really. They've kind of just ignored that as a concept. And their their warp flares are like the most pathetic. Like, boom. Yeah, it's really pathetic. Uh, I don't know why they don't make them interesting, but it's sad because their warp flares is pathetic, and their warp in warp is so overly dynamic. It's like Jesus yeah. Christ. Make that real warp and make the flare bigger and brighter. And also, do you notice there's there's always a turn. You, if you're looking forward or back, there's always a turn in the warp corridor. Why are they turning at warp? It's like a motorway. You're going straight. I know it's not as dynamic and you have to make the tube go further, but it looks really stupid because it's implying they're always going left slightly. Because that's what the shots are. Like, if you look at the Akuda, literally it's going left. Why are you going yeah. left at warp? Why is you because it, it keeps going left? You're just gonna keep going in a circle. It's a stupid visual that doesn't work fundamentally. And I, I'm sad when they do these stupid little decisions. It's like that doesn't work. And Carwin Morris says Protostar appears to be smaller than Equinox. Well, it's not the Equinox, it's or, or yes, smaller than the Equinox, which is a Nova class. It's probably slightly smaller than an Nova class, I would imagine. Well, yeah. small is relative. It's very similar, but it's way longer because it's stretched. So it, it'll look longer, but there's way less internal volume. Yeah. It's probably about the same height, give or take. Because the, yeah. But they, they're just proportioned very differently. <laughs> yes, Ozzy. Yeah. Let me get the line of, is this worth four? No, this is worth 9.97. Hold on to your butt, pal. And then, oh, the beautiful Janeway line, or the whole Janeway. So the real me is hunting us with a quantum slipstream Dauntless class starship. Good luck with that. Thanks for the support. <laughs> yeah, that needs to be in the post, post release trailer. Yeah. It's perfectly delivered. And I love how she's summarized the whole thing. Like, everything about that is cool. So you need yeah. to know it all. And I guess that, yeah, they've never seen the ship before, so that is also new to them. But no, I like I like the the warp line as well, the nine seven five, because he's he's not necessarily bragging, he's just saying it. But it's it's a, a I'd love to hear the direction of that, because it's weird, but in a good way. And this is where pacing becomes problematic from this point onwards, because why haven't they caught them yet? This is a crew of children that are not doing anything to be avoided. They even joke that they says 
uh, keep evasive maneuvering, and and Zero says, "I'm not doing that on purpose. I'm just trying to fly." So, yeah, exactly. an an entirely incapable of using the ship crew is not able to be caught by a crew in a ship of experts. And if you recall, the main three aliens are all the original Protostar crew, which means they know what the Protostar can do because they had to train on the Protostar. So, it should be an instant catch. And there's zero reason for an instant catch. And it's a very, very poor scene in that regard. They don't even try and make allusion to why. It's, I think, personally. Uh, for example, they should, you know, Janeway should say, load on a tractor beam. And then Gwen says, they load do a tractor beam. Okay, reverse the polarity of the shield gr grid. Like, there's little back and forth between both ships of, like, five plans and then torpedo. But there's nothing. It plays very poor, in my opinion. I agree. Yes. I do like the explanation of they're hailing us. Don't answer that. It'll affect them. Well, we're, we're hostile if we don't answer. Da, da, da. That back and forth is mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we get the, the sick bay. That's for some reason, it's just showing everything that's on the main viewer. And he's like, Proto Star. <laughs> yep. It looks a bit daft. Aeon says they could flash their lights Morse code style. There you go. Perfect. Oh, that's so true. You can't corrupt turn signals. Yeah. That's so true. And yes, Tara, there are cameras in animation. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Samuel will tell you that. There's even little camera icons you place in the scene to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, you even have focal length. As your CG camera, it's all based on that. You can do depth of field based on real millimeters to the camera, because most you know film started with film, <clears throat> literally and figuratively film, film cameras, film film negatives, and the more we get into digital, ironically, the more people filmmakers want to replicate the original look we all like film. Yeah. So yeah. by grounding it with a real camera in a scene at sort of a normal height of an actor, of, of a guy carrying it, and the movement speed of a camera, you ground a, a, a CG into reality. Whereas you can move a yeah. camera, like, nine foot, just zipping, but it would look like trash, and you don't almost ever do that. I think Tara's confused of just animation. I think she's thinking animation, like the old style, with the big camera set up, and you just keep replacing the slides and taking a picture. <laughs> that you don't need a camera angle for, because you draw the scene in 2D. Mm -hmm. And then you just overlay yeah. the cells. So you just yeah, need three D animation. You just need one hundred and thirty million frames of the same damn thing as they grin. Yeah. I, uh, yes. God, that warp effect would suck as cell animation. <laughs> that would suck. But yeah, this this take out this pro star jump forward view screen bull. Cut this out. I don't know why that's there in sick bay. Just for whoever's in sick bay to see what's going on. It's just kind of weird. Like if if you know sick bay right is where you go if you're ill, and a lot of the time it's because of a battle or a bad thing. If you're in a battle and it's what's ever on the view screen, and that villain ship you're chasing from, do you really want to see the Borg ship that you're running away from on the big view screen light it with sick bay? I know you, I'm sure you can turn it off, but don't have it on then. Like it would be perfect. If it was a tiny monitor. If 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 the guy I know this takes more screen time, but if there's like a, you know, ooh, we just warp, computer show me. Why it would warp and the little monitor beside him shows a protostar. Perfect. Done. A la Khan and Space Seed. That. Not this. This is silly. Yeah, but still, you sh random person in sick bay that's not even in Starfleet shouldn't have access to that control. No, but I could see Janeway giving him access to, like, see if he can jog his memories. Some basic stuff. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Um, but then they talk about what? What's the next bit? Uh, what's that smell? And I really thought it was going to be Jank and Pog, but no, it's because Murph hatched. What's a Murph? And then there he is, and then we get the new Murph reveal. Well, you say She's reveal. Like a, toddler, like a toddler now. I mean, you say reveal, Stuart, but uh, you revealed it. At least we caught it. We caught it. You sly devil saw him in the trailer. Sly Sir. devil, Stuart, good man. Uh, and yes, there we go, four in. So six episodes of, of New Murph. Um, thoughts, Stuart? 
thoughts? Not the biggest fan. See, I think I think we already know he's a Malo Malo slime worm. Melanoid slime worm. Mm. Um, so they know the species. I think his evolution is either a result of the protostar jumps or perhaps something else. So this he's the only one that's done this because they are aware of what a, a melanoid slime worm is. So I think him evolving, and I think, he's, I think it's like a Pokemon <laughs> in different evolutions. His final one, he's going to be like super sentient, super smart, um, and just kind of, you know, be completely different from what he started as. Uh, but yeah, this looks like the terrible twos stage, like a toddler stage. And then he's going to be like Groot. He's going to grow, you know, so. Now, if I was to use the wordage, rock, 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 get it? <laughs> yeah, Galaxy Quest, yeah. He kind of like Galaxy Quest alien. And the fact that they shout rock, and his best friend's rock. <laughs> Yeah, well, not the like, miners. The miners, not miners. They don't like. They don't like guns. No miners, miners. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of amb ambivalent to this because we don't know what it's going to mean yet. It's a fine design, but all I'm thinking is we're baby grooting this. Like the slug was a concept, right? Weird, silly as a pet. This is now a thing. Baby grooting it, right? Just reverse where they start young, go old, yeah. baby groot the opposite. Um, but yes, it's cute. It's still cute. It's still nice. Everyone's happy. And J Way ignoring the ship entirely. No plans. No anything until. But dialing torpedoes. Yeah. And also, isn't More... Jankum engineering not tactical? He is engineering. Yeah. Why would engineering have access to photon torpedoes actually ready to fire? Because torpedoes aren't fire. They're ye load yield. Load? Load the, load the tubes. Yeah, I said the same thing last night. Why are they, all the tubes loaded with torpedoes already? Oh, because they're just kids. Nope, not a good excuse. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not tactical. That's This is an impractical situation. I think they fired from there before, but that also was bad then. Ugh. Mark Lawrence just sent $5. Thanks, Mark. My good daughter thought the new Morph was really cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, now this, again, this line made me blah. The fire torpedo... And Janeway says, shields. Shield. Weren't they up already, you dumbass? Yeah. Sorry, what rank are you? Uh, Ensign Janeway? Are you Ensign? Are you Cadet Janeway? Your shields are up at warp. You need them to go to warp. Deflector shields aren't enough at warp. You need actual shields. Am I right, Stuart? I would say yes, 100%. Plus, you're also chasing a possibly hostile... Um, what a stupid a... line! Yes, like forward the same thing first time. Forward shields to maximum, fine, fine. Yes, shields is dumb. Now it barely works for Sulu in six because the deflectors are on fine. But that's a cool kind of like. I mean, this is a stupid line. They should know better. Yeah. At least I Are appreciate. At least I appreciate the shields have zero impact on the shields. Want to put a path on a ship doesn't do anything. I like that. They're not like shields down to thirty percent because that's a discovery trick. You know. Wow, they took the shields down to thirty percent. Bloody hell. At least I appreciate didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. But on the impact, did you see the shield uh, mm -hmm. shapes in there, which is cool. Nice little impact. Just like the Pro Star one. So that is the standard there. Yeah, and I'm gonna then return prepare prepare, prepare prepare to return fire, in which case the ensign and uh, the diviner come up and no, his admiral, his daughter's on board, and this I thought was a little strange. That's why I'm targeting their third nacelle, which isn't out yet. <laughs> but somebody brought that up, and I kind of played devil's advocate and you know defended Janeway here. You can tell when a ship is powering phasers, when phasers are locked on, when weapons and systems are engaged, when so they'll be able to read that they're activating the proto drive and it's almost ready. So she's waiting for it to pop out so that it doesn't proto jump away. She's going to target it to make sure that they don't go anywhere. That said, she doesn't know her shield's already up. <laughs> so she's not very aware of the situation. Damn you. Just to throw that in there. Um... 
from Hell's Hell. It's Timothy. I just don't know why they aren't tractor beaming. Because you can tractor at warp. That's an entire thing. They tractor you at warp to get you places. That's a... They're not even trying. I don't know. Or, or like... At least, at least they're not firing phases, which is they often can and can't. I like torpedoes only. That's nice. But, like, you can disable... Like, I don't know. It, it's a good, it's a fine idea, because that's the one unique thing. Without the pro drive, they're nothing special. Right? It's like the spore drive and discovery. Yeah. Take that out. It's just a shitty little ship. Can't do that much. But, yeah, it's not up yet. I, I like it if it's charging, but, yeah, I think the, the editing should have been shifted a little bit around. Yeah. You know, it should have been target the nacelles. Captain or Admiral, they're charging their pro drive. Target the third nacelle. Boom. Done. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure you can't get a pro drive and if your main nacelles are out. That would seem like any of the yeah. three nacelles. Like, it's a, they're all needed. So, I would think. And somebody also made the, the observation that it's kind of stupid on her part to target a the proto drive as it's getting ready to initiate, what if there's feedback damage into the protostar itself? That could be a really massive Although, explosion. Although, she would have researched the protostar enough to know that it's not possible. I know. I know. So, so I, that, I said that. My only yeah. problem here specifically is that they've also got shields up. Or so do they? one torpedo is not going to... Because it does, it, it explodes on the proto drive. So my assumption is they didn't have their shields up. But they need them to go to warp. Especially proto warp. Just the forward shields. Because you're only warp warping forward. It's a bubble, Stuart! It's a bubble, don't... No, no, it isn't. You can turn off other shields. I know. And you can play any game, any game. Well, no, I, well, I disagree with that in the warp. I would think you have to have all at like at least 1% just to get the bubble. I would agree, but 1% a torpedo could cut through, no problem. But it just feels so stupid as a moment. Like, one torpedo, and it entirely fractures it, but not enough to actually damage it. Like, it disables it with sparks, but no physical damage. Yeah. So, what happened, sorry? <laughs> I don't get what conceptually happened here. Because it's a full fireball. This thing is on fire. This thing is blown up. Oh, wait, it's fine. It's just sparking. It's, it's just sparking. It doesn't... And also, did you notice um, the torpedo... Uh, a particle is is already on the ship before they fire it. No, because there's distinct because it is the you can tell the parallax of it moving and it's staying still at the darkness and then it's fired. So they forgot to turn the layer off until it's fired. It's a very small thing, but you can see the the light and then it, then it is fired after it's already in shot. I just found oh, it funny. Didn't notice that. Yeah, it's just they just missed the frame by like three frames or ten frames, whatever. But anyway, all that aside, we see the get ripped out of warp, which is great. We see it kind of like tumble with like the sparks coming out, which also looks fantastic. And again, the pathetic lens flare dawners coming out, pathetic. But at least it does it. Pathetic. And Stuart, they're screwed, right? I mean, you've just entirely oh. dis disabled or destroyed the pro drive. And in fact, I mean, come on, they've blew up from the outside. You can't repair that from the inside, right? If this thing is now holes uh, holes out then they've got to land and physically repair it all via um, space, well I guess they can make a work be fine, but this thing is now gone for the episodes, so you can't just use it again I would think so that's a serious thing to do to this, this ship, it's one advantage mm, absolutely hold on just one second sure, one second deferred shields are actual shields uh, are different actual shields, yes, deferred shields are different actual shields yes uh Shields are not used during warp one X one would need shields only if it was used. Well no, they've still got their fur pulp plating polarized, I would think. So we see many times when they Cause that counts as shields. I mean they are shields, just shields on the whole shields. Alright. Yeah, so we're not screwed because Captain Okuna is there. Okana. Okana. I keep saying it wrong too. Uh -huh. Um, he's like, wait a minute, are we near the neutral zone? This is a Federation ship, we can't go in there. We can. I love how Pog's like, it's neutral, it's in the name. <laughs> Get the whole explanation, it'll start a war with the Romulans. Mm -hmm, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it's fine if we remodulate our shields so we can hide from their sensors. 
So we can go in, but Admiral Janeway can't follow. What, she can't do that too? She can't modulate her shields? <laughs> so the, what? Dumb. It's also doubly dumb because it, it's implied that he knows a way to do it that's special. And there's a line earlier where he talks about the neutral zone as if he goes through the neutral zone. But Pog does it without instructions. So there is no trick. There's just two buttons, remodulate button, and that's enough. What are you on about? Like, it, I would have been fine if he had gone to the panel. He's doing what to my shields? A old trick I learned from Balana in the Marquis days. Well, yeah, like that would have been really cool. It plays out so poor in that regard. Um, it makes it sound effortless. And it isn't. Because the entire point of the zone is to stop ships from doing this. You can't just do this. And if you could, they'd be meaningless. <coughs> or at least not without doing a severe thing. Or at least a remodulation. Because yeah. the fact that they are already on the border also implies that this will take less than a minute or of the ilk. This is an instant fix. No radical anything to anything. And these are people that don't even know how to use the ship properly. So non-skilled can do this modification within a few seconds to a ship that he's never seen. It's that easy to, to get through the neutral zone and be not detected. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, just, I just want to just check out your poll. I haven't looked at it since you oh. put it up. It's, it's Bill Campbell, not Bruce. Just for the record. Okay. Read the poll, Stuart. Ron Campbell. Ron Campbell. Uh, what did you enjoy seeing more? The Zindi again after so long? Real Klingon? Or uh, Akana again? Bill actor. Bill Campbell. Yeah. Yes. Now, what do you think about them being literally at the border? I mean, sublight. Convenient. Which means if they had stayed at warp even one more minute, they'd have been in the Roman space. Well, the, the, well, the thinking is that they're skirting it. Okay. So just running along the length of it. Wouldn't Janeway have also warp. noted that? Like, why are they yeah. traveling along Southern Neutral Zone? So. Yeah. So that also means this state. So this planet was literally on the border. Because one light year is on the border. Five lights is on the border. Yeah. So that Kazon is on the border of the neutral zone. Yep. Cool. Yep, indeed. But anyway, they have no choice, so they set course. And then, of course, Janeway is going after them. And I love this. Her first officer kind of saying, like, but negotiations, it'll breach the treaty. So there's ongoing negotiations with the Romulans now, which I be. like. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, yeah, but if they get our hands, their hands on our tech, that's going to be an even bigger problem. Game you over, man. Orders. Game over. Yeah. You have my orders. Follow them. And he's like, hey, you once, you once told me, Admiral, to listen to my emotions and not be guided by them. If this is about Chakotay, you're being guided by them right now. I'm sorry, Admiral, but at risk of war, I cannot fulfill them. And then we get the whole interruption of we're being hailed. So I really like that he like stood up to her. He's only a commander. He's not a captain that's sort of like helping out an admiral. This is an admiral, and you're missing one rank, and he's a commander. So he's still doing the same job. He's the number one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, standing up to her, I think that was pretty ballsy. Yeah, I do very much feel like that. I mean. I mean, he's Chakotay's second officer. And Chakotay yeah. would want a very strong-headed guy. To yeah. So I, I can see that being directly. And I'm sure he talked about Janeway uh, in the briefings and whatever. So, like, he... he yeah. Specific person. And everybody keeps saying this, and I don't understand it. Pumpkin Spice says, shouldn't Torres be helping Janeway look for Chakotay and the protostar? No. <laughs> Why does it have to be... Ch uh, Balana that's helping. Because she was the main I understand, one. I understand the connection. And she's developed the Purple Star and she's. Well, Dauntless. But had a thing. Yeah. Well. They say Dauntless, not specifically Purple Star, I believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. But no, I don't think we need Balana here. It's fine. I mean, it's, it means cool. I mean, she could help, you know, with a ship that's. You know, I could see it being let, let's let's not leave Janeway again in the Delta Quadrant. Let's have the person that developed Slipstream 
with but you know it's fine yeah an andorian speaking with such logic yeah somebody also said mm-hmm. last night is he part vulcan part andorian i'm like i don't know he kind of has a vulcan like ears he talks like a vulcan i mean that would be a she... really unique twist he's half rom half on and half vulcan that's kind of cute actually yeah yeah that makes sense when she gave him the speech of you know don't let your emotions guide you he was very vulcan yeah yeah uh, but let me finish the poll do one last one before we start to close out and you of course read that a minute ago but what do you enjoy seeing more 41 percent the zindi excellent 31 percent the real klingon and 28 percent bruce bill <laughs> um 83 viewers 69 likes let's try to get those likes up to 80 guys if you haven't hit like yet please give that like a tap we're almost we're almost three quarters of the way to our minimum so we're just just there guys um we need well, I won't give you a definitive number. Yeah, I will. We need another seventy dollars to get there. So if anybody can put in a twenty, couple of fives, tens, that'd be great. It'll really help us out and get us to that minimum that we have to get to. Uh, so if you can help out, please do so. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we want to hear your thoughts because we're coming up to the end here, obviously. And uh, yeah, this has been a good episode to chat about. Lots to lots of questions. Yeah. And I mean, I just really like, you know, Romans, this stuff is always a fun concept and to be thrown a political problem like this is great. And yeah, to be called on is fantastic. Although I am totally on Jeremy's side. The Protostar cannot hold out against a single Dederodex. You've just covered its proto drive. As soon as it crosses the border, they own it. Right? And you it's might... Like kids aboard. And you might be able to fight these ships enough to destroy the Protostar, which at this point is a better choice to destroy the Protostar than let the Romulans get it. Because the Romulans can develop proto-warp, then they can warp an entire fleet to every place in the Alpha Quadrant and destroy them. So no offence to this guy, yes, you risk a war to stop them from getting a possibly universe-destroying technology. Right? Because yeah. the, the the other option's worse. So, sorry, you know. Because they're not going to give it back. <laughs> yeah. You know? But anyway, as we said, incoming hail, and then we see three Dideridex decloak. Yes, we do. And we get introduced to Commander Kash Kaseth of the Romulan Star Empire. Um, basically just saying, hey, post the neutral zone if you come in. Which is an act of war, as Samuel pointed out. You're already fucking in the neutral zone, the Romulans. Neutral zones aren't 40 meters wide; they're like four light years wide at the minimum, probably. Uh, and somebody else pointed that out on my first reaction last night. I'm like, "Yep, you're absolutely right. They're they're actually in the neutral zone. There's no way that it'd ever be nose to nose. If it was on view screens, fine. But you actually see the ships and the Dauntless, so they're like already in the neutral zone." It's a little bit embarrassing, honestly. And they must know that. They just wanted the cool visual. Because kids don't know. Yeah, exactly. Kid, kids don't care. They might care when they're in their 30s, but they don't care. That's one of those conceits of, like, it doesn't work. And I will rant about that in a minute. Um, and then, Stuart, it hard cuts. It's yes. e- easily their worst ending in terms of, like, oh, <laughs> goodbye. When I was watching it, when I was watching it, when the hard cut and the music, and then boom. I was like, fuck you. I actually vi- verbally said, fuck you at the time. Yep. I'm like, no. It, it's so unsatisfying, it's unreal. It builds this so much... Oh, oh, goodbye. The wow, Yeah. the fuck you. It's really yeah. harsh. I think kids would be pissed off with this ending, honestly. They don't know who Romulans are. This doesn't. That's not a cool payoff for them. And it's such a bad... At- pe- but as, well, as-, as I've said a billion times... For once in history, it's a week-on-week show. The yeah. rest of Eternity is a yeah. streaming service show. They watch it and binge. So this is the yeah. one time it'll piss people off. So yeah. it's better to play to the, the rest of time than the yeah. us right now. So I can't blame him for that respect. Alyssa Jericho, I agree, um, says, Jane, that should be the next line of the, that first, of the, uh, the first line of the next episode. Is Janeway saying, why are you in the neutral zone? It really is. Well, we saw a Federation ship chasing another Federation ship, and we were just curious. We were cloaked. If we didn't decloak, you wouldn't even know we were here. 
But I got mm-hmm. a couple of quick points, and this was only noticed for my TV whether its settings were. So if you guys know uh, CGI um, rendering things, one thing you learn quickly is what can I get away with, right? And things like planets suck if you're improperly because they have multiple layers, things rotate. One of the oldest cheats <coughs> is that you render a picture of a planet and you put that picture on a single frame polygon mesh 3D model and then you're actually just rendering a picture of a planet and at any distance you can't tell um, I mean any far distance and that's a way of saving literally 10 hours to 20 minutes looks about the same right that is also very applicable to nebulas and this was done all throughout modern everything and even we've learned in lower decks and prodigy they did a lot of matte paintings which they single frame drawn in the computer they add a few animated things like a cloud or some smoke etc now this nebula i noticed because my tv was set a certain way if i up the brightness of this nebula plate you can see the hard cut of the polygon you can see where the polygon of the nebula ends and the black of the non-rendered space, whatever. Um, because blacks are different levels. So uh, so this is a rendered 2D nebula thrown into a 3D scene. And you can kind of tell it is anyway. But I love, you can literally see the edge of the polygon. And there it is, Stuart. Makes wow. me real happy, because I do this every day. There it is. I can see lots of their render errors. I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you can fix that by just matching the colour of the blacks. Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> it's just really funny. Because you, barely, you barely get away with it that I can do that. Um, Grant McGregor throws in $5. The vehicle replicator might spit out re- replacement parts. We will see. Well, fix the proto jump, uh, proto drive. Yeah, good. Uh, and Grant McGregor. Absolutely. Well, it was annoying. This is worse, I think. This is more energy behind it. Grant McGregor throws in two dollars. New. Uh, no, episode nine is the worst cutoff. It's close. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is the this is my rant about the ship. Yeah, I I know the conceders and TNG. They're the same logic, of there's a ship on the neutral zone saying don't enter the neutral zone. But I always took Tomalock as being, yeah, he was breaking the treaty. Will you? <laughs> like, he knew he was. And he was saying, will you fight me to prove I'm doing the legal thing? It wasn't the case of, he, it wasn't the case of they're actually over there. He's daring you to hit him here. Because yeah. it's Picard's choice whether to make a complaint <laughs> or to push the point. This scene does not work at all because they actively say you're about to go into the neutral zone. And this and this, the Dauntless is not huge. The Derek's are huge. They are very close to this ship. They're within thousands of kilometers. Yeah. They are so in the neutral zone, it's not funny. They are light years in the neutral zone. They were cloaked meandering. And they happen to be here. It's a really embarrassing little moment um, that TNG also was wrong. This is way more wrong with the lines of dialogue. It's fine they could fix it in so many ways, but this is a bad ending for Romulan textural stuff. Uh, Would have been better if they didn't decloak. You just had an incoming hail and yes. you see the Romulan they're going. We're, we're, monitoring, 100%. we're monitoring what's going on yep. on the neutral zone, and we've noticed a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. And then, yeah, even if they were violating the neutral zone, they just kept cloaked and didn't yeah, you know, show their hand. Because you assume they were always Romulan in the neutral zone. They're always breaking that treaty. That's not the point. The point is her wording is do this and you'll break the law, which I'm breaking right now. Fuck right off. Yeah. What do, what do you mean? Yeah. You have nothing to stand on. She can say, okay, well, you, you war. There you go. We're now at war. You just broke the treaty. What do you want? Like, it's a silly line. Another great way would have been um, to actually have, as they are, so right at the scene where they're seeing the map, right? There's three blips on the other side of the border. And they're Romulan ships. And then in part two, those blips go dark and these three decloak five lighters apart, showing those were sensor beacons. Fake. So that's where they or... say they were. They're actually right next to you. That would have been a fun reveal. Like, we we play nice, but actually we're... 
in the neutral zone. Or, or you have a close up of Janeway's face, and you zoom out. You see the Dauntless. You see this Dauntless like zoom. You zoom way out. You see the Dauntless really small. Then you see it like the camera pan over. Yeah. Like a bunch of stars, and then it like settles on empty space. And all of a sudden, you see like three warbirds yeah. decloak, and they're at, they're at warp, and the camera starts moving with them. Yeah, hundred percent. Like something like that would have been great. They're on their way. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Because this isn't a border. This is a neutral zone. There's an in between. There's two borders. Either one, they're breaking. Yeah. So you can double break by Romulans going into the neutral zone is breaking the treaty. Into Federation space is double breaking the treaty. So they're really breaking the treaty. And three, yeah. three is not a, a chill force. That is an assault fleet. <laughs> One is bad enough because they have scout ships. Yeah. They can have freight. They can have anything. Three is we are here to wreck. Good luck. Yep. Aeon though throws in ten dollars. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, I'm loving and really am appreciating how much the quality has improved of New Trek. I thought I'd never see characters from TNG, Voyager, DS9 again. It's great. Love this episode. 8.5 out of 10. Great breakdown. Thank you so much. Thank you. Eric Martin puts in $5. Thank I'm typing and having a phone call, so can't follow a conversation. But here is some cash just because. Thank you, Eric. That's the other thing. When you come and visit next time, Samuel, I'll have to drive you down to Woodstock and visit Eric and see his huge-ass TV. Because we watched a lot of your a few of your fan films the other night on it. It's like, wow, some of those... Sp- CGI shots are very impressive on yeah. the screen. Any in particular that yeah. strike out? Now you've said that. Just no. One, one that you can. Don't. No, no, no. Don't. I'm not stroking your ego. No, we watched the the time heist trailer and that looked really good. The, the refit Enterprise looked fantastic. So. <laughs> anyway, General Grievous, two dollars. I'm shocked to see gambling at this establishment. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> All right, um, so that's the end. So this is the time where you guys super chat in with your scores out of 10. I will read the super chat scores after we give our final wrap up and um, scores ourselves. Uh, if you don't want to super chat in your score, um, you can put it in the regular chat and Samuel will read that when we're done. Yes. But we honestly need another $50 to get to our minimum. So if we get a few more super chats in for scores, that'd be amazing. And we'd really appreciate that. So if you can, please do so. We'd really appreciate it. And yeah. It's time to give our final thoughts and scores on this episode. So, Stuart, what did you think of this episode? So, Stuart, what did you think? Now, we've discussed it in retrospect, double retrospect, new retrospect of season one, episode 14. And do you think our rather in-depth discussion has changed your opinion on it? I don't know if it's changed my opinion on it. A lot of the questions we had, we, we both are thinking has been along the same lines. I think like we haven't discussed it necessarily. Um, so I still really enjoy the episode. I think it's, it's very well paced. The chase scene's a little bit wonky in a few spots. There are of course some things that just don't make any sense. Um, but overall I can overlook that stuff because it is, this is like classic, trek back again and i kind of appreciate that with one or two minor little things but um overall seeing okana seeing the zindi seeing a klingon um there's a lot here to like but honestly the frustration factor of the kids not saying anything even just blurting out we have a dangerous weapon on our ship don't even have to say it's a starfleet ship that'll get the attention then you have the conversation um Something like that would have been fine. It just the frustration is, and I think Rock exemplified it when she said, "So you all spoke to Starfleet, <laughs> but none of you mentioned anything about the weapon." That was the whole sole. That was the sole purpose of us leaving the ship. Um, so I, I think that's fine. Uh, Murph changing is all right. I don't like the way new Murph looks. So I'll just have to get used to it. Um, I'm sure he'll either have more cocoon stages. I think that's going to be the progression. He's just going to go into cocoons and then come out with something new. Um, but it's a kind of a eh reveal for me, honestly, especially with everything that else was going on. I didn't care about that. And they all took a time, time out of this chase to be like, oh, look at it. It's the new Murph. Oh. <laughs> just seemed weird and out of place. Um, yeah, the Derodexes, the Romulans, there's a whole lot in this to really enjoy. But yeah, minor little plot things and 
you know, it's fine. Although, although it is, it is lots of small minor things that mount up versus any yes. truly egregious. Except the neutral zone bit at the end. That I think is a is a oh guys sort of plot. Yeah. Score, yeah. Stuart. <clears throat> Score. Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And guys, remember your score. Super chat, Stuart reads. Non super chat, I read. Forty one bucks, and we've hit our minimum. We'll be fantastic. We're right there. We're right there. Yeah, we're just forty dollars away from our minimum. So if anybody can help out, please do. Score wise, for me, it's tough. I'm gonna have to give it an eight point one out of ten. I think that's fair. Not nine point seven. <laughs> no, definitely not nine point seven five. So, yeah. My closing that's thoughts fair. after the discussion. It's it's so tricky because it is genuinely fun, despite the plot things, which a lot of these episodes don't manage to get that over. But it's a show that you again, having talked to Aaron previously, they probably had a lot of these discussions. But they got locked into the that's not enough time to tell the story at pick and choose. We need to have a chase through snow to keep kids excited, whereas we'd rather have this or this. However, I do think you could have solved a lot of these tiny things with one more draft. That's entirely in the writing. Not the plot, not the animation, the writing. Um and it doesn't matter if they think they have the answer to like the neutral zone stuff or whatever. Like it's not in the episode. That's that's it has to make a screen to be there, right? Yeah. Doesn't but it doesn't affect the enjoyment, which is a nice 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 effect. Um, great use of Klingon, Kazon, all that stuff. Excellent. Uh, they now have assets to reuse because that's what they are. Fantastic. That you know, as as I've said previously, you know, as soon as somebody invented the bridge window or warp hyperspace, other productions feel they can use that. It was a mistake then. That mistake is now living on. Versus. You you make cling on for one episode. You can use them for other episodes. You made the asset. That's a great choice. And you you went prime cling on. They keep existing. So now they've assets just to keep going, etc. But no, it's good. It's fun. I like the two Jane ways. They are different, which was a, a joy to see. I do think I would probably have cut most of the dad stuff, Diviner stuff. I think he dragged it down a bit because his stuff didn't edit particularly well with the episode. Um. Yeah, I definitely would have shifted it around a bit, I think. And certainly, if they're at real warp, I would like the ending better. That always is going to rub the wrong way. You know, just the wrong effect. Like, they're choosing the wrong effect. That that's, there's not really a, you know, artistic interpretation there is the wrong effect. It's like, oh, guys, come on. Uh, and also, after Photon Torpedo launcher that's not there before, and top docking tube that's not there on the model, I'm pretty, pretty damn sure... But score wise, I think you're pretty close to a fair score. It can't be a nine, it's nowhere near a nine, but it definitely feels better than a seven. Um as I said to you in the other review, it's got a really nice strong story progression. It's it's hardcore A plot, which is great. I think Oh, I wanna give it Okay, other scores. Ooh. I don't often, but I can do. Uh, hmm. Okay, question. Looking at these scores. How does this compare to season one, the first ten? Because I'm looking at the scores. These are very high scores. Where would this compare, do you think? About the same. Okay. But the same as the first. Like, this show's been consistently good. It has. And and even the, the small plot holes or things we think are plot holes that are soon explained by Aaron um, make up for the fact that, like, we know that they talk about this. They know, We know they have discussions in the writing room about things. And if something's in this show, there's a deliberate reason it's there. Yeah. So this show's been consistently good. It's hard to say. This has just been on par with everything else so far. But you scored 8.1... I could say no. that's your that's your ninth favorite, so it's on your bottom five, bottom four. Okay. 
There's a lot of really good Prodigy episodes. I'm just but... saying, like, that's it's interesting that score, which you think is kind of fair, well, is actually one of the lowest episodes by reasonable margin. This, this cutoff, this yes. ending, I, I gotta see the next episode to see how it stacks up, because as one episode, this is probably like a good, really good, long, good hour-long episode. Yeah. But that ending just kind of... <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're right. So... Yeah, we're sort of on. I, you know, you know. Let's both say we reserve the right to downgrade this episode's score based on the next one. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so I, I I'll entirely concur eight point one with you, Stuart, and then we'll rescore it next week and see how that compares. I think that's fair. I think I think yeah. I was gonna say either eight or eight point two. I wasn't sure which way. So I'll, say eight, I'll agree with you, Stuart. I'll agree with you. There you go. It's amazing. Which is Beautiful. pretty actually quite rare. What do you all well, think? That's the question. I'm going to read some super chats, but none of them are scores by the looks of it. So, guys, we need another $35. $35 to get to our minimum. Oh, so, so if anybody can super chat in, we'd, we'd appreciate it. But let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, Grant McGregor puts in $5. If this was lower decks, this would have been the neutral, neutral zone. Uh huh. General Grievous, $2. Uh, Romulan hairdo uh, lean, leaning forward, JJ STO style. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Entertainment Pudding, great name, <laughs> $2. Or Entertaining Pudding, sorry. Uh, love Dr. George Costanza. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's a good character, for sure. Yeah, I, I really hope we get a, a, a full episode of Prodigy Dauntless Crew. Kind of like The Mandalorian, we've got a bit of a fair episode, or vice versa, I mean. Like, give us a full Dauntless episode. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, so non superjet scores. Let's see what you guys have said, and we don't know. Don't know what you guys are going to say. Well, of course, though, Stuart. Guess who gave it a ten? A perfect episode. Donnie, I already saw that one. Donnie, yeah. for those of you uh, that don't know Donnie, uh, his judgment is is almost perfect. So he has given us a perfect score. This is a entirely perfect episode of Prodigy. Yeah, he gives everything a ten. So. His tens are worth like the the the, the, the pixels they're pasted on. But he gave it a ten out of ten avalanches. Right. Ten out of ten avalanches for crossroads, he says. So. But Aeon eight point five, Aussie eight point seven six five. Yes, we get it. <laughs> uh, Planet X, he would give it an eight, but uh, the abrupt ending takes it down to a seven point five. Uh, uh, Tara, 8.66, is repeating. And yes, one more Janeway is true, very much so. Let's have a look at... Uh, they were quite far up. Uh, Stanley, 7.5. Carwin, 7.6. Eric, 8. Ozzy again, 8.765. Dan, 8. Tara again, 8.66. Grant, 6.5, so a low score. Uh, Thirst says, to be fair, all Prodigy episodes cut to credits black too abruptly. We've been watching DS9 and they cut to a black. Isn't that harsh? There, uh, 7.5. Project 7. Devro 8. General Grievous 8. Mr. 9. Charlie 8.1. Jim 8. Um, Mr. Jericho 6.5. Charlie 7 is fair. Planet X 7.5. Entertainment at 8.5. Interesting. Pretty broad spectrum there. Some high, some low. What we gave. Hmm. And SPS Guru 2000 throws in 5 euros with a 7.5 out of 10. Mm. And that leaves us only $30 away from our minimum. So if anybody can super chat in the last minutes here, that would be greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah, I think seeing how this continues in the next part is going to be the be important to see. How well this one kind of stands out because it was you can tell these two were written as one episode. And I'm like, shit, we got to cut this, or we're gonna cut us right there. Yes, pretty much, but that's okay, it mostly works. Alan says eight, but bad communication dropped a point. It was so annoying. I, I, I know, I feel you, I feel your pain. <laughs> I, I, I like that they're not actually children children because that kind of helps me but at the same time yeah. they'd work better if they were like 10 but they're flying this ship they're doing missions 
their late teens. Yeah, like, um, yeah mid teens. I'd say sixteen. Like is the oldest of all of them. Sure. Be my guess. Uh, well, I guess teen. I guess teens aren't that many years. But yeah, I meant like uh, seventeen. Yeah. Etc. So it's just um, like I, I don't want to have to say that every other week. Because they're kids, that shouldn't be that. That's just well, you wrote yourself into a, a severe corner, etc. Yeah, it's always the excuse because it's because they're kids, or it's a kids show. It's like it's very smartly written for a kids show. So some of the decisions they make, if them being kids, I get, but yeah, pretty ballsy kids, honestly. So, but yeah. I think, uh, but still, I mean, still, you know, better than most of Discovery. <laughs> better than all of Discovery. Well, mm-hmm. there's some good episodes of Discovery, but they come just to this level, maybe. Pulse, yeah, yeah, better yeah. than Mo. No, I still think Picard's episode one was still better because that was really like, I know yeah, it was shell shot exactly. from season one, but that was still really, really good. But uh... there are parts of Discovery that are very, very good. But a whole episode of Discovery, there's really shit in there that drags it down. So, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, and it's 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 nice that we, I think, because this is such an odd show in terms of structure that we've had so many breaks, so many other things. We are four in to batch three, and they're week by week. So it felt a little bit like they were not doing a lot of Dauntless. But this was a great, great time for Indigo to full Dauntless. Because I only got introduced in episode 9, or 10, sorry. Like, 10 yeah. to 14 is not a lot of episodes in between. About 20 minutes. That's like, an hour and 20 later, we got full Dauntless. Yeah. Like, that's great, pacing-wise. So it, it, they are doing good choice. I think a binge, as as I think it was definitely better the first oh, yeah. 10, will be really solid. Yeah. Uh, and I hope they keep up the good momentum. But boy, what a thing to have the protostar implied to be in the in the Roman Roman in the neutral zone, or even in Roman space. Because if you're already, you know, um, in the neutral zone, just go into their space as well. Yeah, I would think it's less dangerous almost because the Federation definitely can't meet you there. Uh, at least in the neutral zone, there's a bit of wiggle room. Yeah. Hmm. Mister Bisbee, Discovery can sporadically be good sci-fi, but it's never a good Star Trek. Yeah, it's the odd moment that's good Star Trek. Not great Star Trek, but good. But yeah, it's it's very good generic sci-fi discovery, I would say. With some bad characters. Yeah, and stupid decisions. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's characters that drag it down as to be good or bad sci-fi, let alone the Star Trek is entirely a different thing. Yeah. And Stanley says an interesting uh, point. Uh, it's called Prodigy. Aren't they supposed to be above average intelligence? I really wish the show was called Progeny because everybody confuses when he says my progeny. It's, it's, it's my pro- No, it's not. It, the, the words are too similar, especially for kids to get. So, yeah. But yeah, they are pretty bright kids. Rock is smart. Jankum's good at engineering. Um, Gwendala is just, she's linguistic. She knows how many languages. I can't even remember. Them. Um, and Dal is just, you know, he's a, a risk taker. So they are kind of all prodigies in their own ways. Well, it? they're they're the fun version of kids, which are total dumbasses that have all the potential in the world. <laughs> yeah, which is you know that, that that's fine. They're they're young. They don't and they have zero guidance. My assumption yeah. is that if the show goes into seasons three, four, five, whatever, they can't. This can't be the plot into season three. They can't be avoiding Dauntless for a full season, as in a full 20 episodes. So at some point, they've got to join Starfleet or not, right? So they're, they're, they're going to yeah. grow in a time jump. You know, maybe... maybe I've seen it before. Um, if you've ever seen the show Zoids, the original show, there's literally like a 10-year yeah. time jump. In, and it's like, wow! Two different shows, same vision, whatever. It, it, I mean, it feels like two different shows. But it gets you have all these narrative developments and, and boom. So I'd be entirely fine with them skipping like five years and yeah. now they're like in Starfleet on the Pro Star A or whatever. You know, like some like, wow, this is... And the real story is about saving Divinus people because the real story can't be we're, we're running from Starfleet. Because once you get kids in, 
they'll like the characters. The characters that you're following, not the kid vibe. Because kids like adult shows. Yeah. I mean, in, um, you know, uh, Disney, they're not all 15. They might not be old looking, but they're not, you know, they could easily be in their 20s, all, you know, uh, 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 Anna and Elsie aren't, like, they could be 20 or 16. I mean, you know. Yeah. I think I think Prodigy is, especially with the way it's portrayed in the opening credits, with the colors, I think Prodigy is referring to Murph specifically. I think Murph is going to be at the end of this, like I said, mm. super smart, super super intelligent, some kind of strange being that they've never seen before. Yeah, all is a re- all is all of a result of those proto jumps affecting its metabolism or something, because um, they already know it's a melanoid slime worm, and that's no big deal. Right, so I think Prodigy just might be the overarching story of the Murph. Murph is the the key to this. Yeah, no, I kind of like, kind of like Jar Jar was. He was the key to this. If he doesn't work, it's not gonna work. Then people will bitch for the next thirty years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's what Prodigy yeah, could be referring to. Man, that that it's comment, stupid. that that yeah. that that really that really uh. But you know, I mean, the stupidest slug creature that just eats everything, and having the show named Prodigy when not, the kids are like average, above average at most, maybe. So who knows? We'll see. I don't know what the overarching plan is, but. All right, guys. I think we'll call it there. We haven't hit our minimum, but we're close. So thank you, guys. Yeah. Not watched. If you're watching this after the fact, hit that super thanks down there, because uh, that helps us out as well. So. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah. Until next time. Yes, and of course, check out our uh, videos during the week. And of course, I do reviews yes. uh, videos next week. We're going to do a lot more lives on topics, etc. Because we're both actually around <laughs> more next week. And of course, put the go go if you want, etc. Oh, and yes, the poll. I also asked, what do you think of the ending? Forty-one percent to erupt, but thirty-five percent don't care. Can't wait for part two. Yeah. With twenty-four, great. Interesting. Interesting. Cut that there. Cool. Perfect. You'll see us tomorrow. Right, so until next time. Yes. Yes, Commander Cock. He's got him fairly. Bye, guys. All right, buddy. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.